Well, I'd very much like to be equal to you. Maybe I'll show you the way. Shai Hulu decides to die if you become Fremen. What if Paul Atreides was still alive? Enough! You humiliated our family. May thy knife chip and shatter. May thy knife chip and shatter. <laughs> You heard it up top. Fear not, listeners, for fear is the mind killer. That's right. Here we're going to start killing minds because we're talking Dune Part 2 here on Normies Like Us with your hosts, uh, Colin. But my secret name <laughs> is Ski Pop, which means <laughs> cactus head. This is uh, Mike Zach Hatterack. Give a dog a bone. <laughs> And this is Kuab Deeb, but you may call me the Kabzak Hadarak. Ah. Uh, Fears uh, of the Mind Killer. I must not little, fear. Little salute knife thing to you guys, real quick. May thy knife chip and shatter. Oh God. All right. You know? let's, we have to talk about this right <laughs> Oh, my God. No yeah. means go to YouTube. <laughs> You're check not out our video the version. Full experience if you no. are just Surprise. listening to this thing. You need the yeah. visuals for this one. You need to see what Mike <laughs> is doing. We ju- I just joked that knife salute. Mike has the knife. He is and dressed I as the Muad'Dib, the chosen uh-huh. one. He has drank the water of life. He's high I on have. his face. <laughs> In fact, I've drank the water of life out of my <gasps> official Dune oh, Two cup from the Alamo Draft House. So oh. I got my worm piss right here. You know. That's amazing. Uh, okay. I want to hate. Whoa. Walk with that rhythm real quick. Milk that little <laughs> yeah, worm. Yeah, <laughs> that's right. Exactly. Um, yeah, I went all out. Um, I guess to recap, we've done a Dune episode before, correct? And at that time, I had not really known anything about Dune. We did the David Lynch and the Dune 2021 kind of both at the same time. And after seeing this, for the viewers on the YouTube, you can tell that I'm all in. Um, I'm in the desert. Yes. And uh, yeah, I'm here for it. <laughs> You're one of the Fremen now. <laughs> That's wow, right. you are. I <laughs> listen. I you are one upping me in the in the visual department. I was planning. <laughs> I just got back from seeing this movie in IMAX at an AMC theater, and I had this all planned out. I was going to go to an AMC theater, and I was going to get the famous mm. Dune popcorn bucket. The popcorn bucket. The flashlight. Yeah, <laughs> greatest <laughs> movie tie-in yeah. product of all time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Absolutely Guess incredible. What? They didn't have it. They were out. It sold, sold out, out, I guess. People in the wow. means, they wanted to get that's it. So on, I wasn't that's able to get it. Somewhere, yeah, for sure. Yeah, I think they're reselling yeah. it for like a hundred bucks now. But way to go, Mark. What I department. do have. Mm-hmm. You've got that nice cup. I'm yes. drinking a little spiced. Oh nice. <laughs> okay. Spiced Listeners, Coca-Cola. <laughs> so I urge you again to watch this because Jacob is underselling. He's on the planet of Iraq. He's completely uh-huh. in right. orange. You see his orange little Dune book behind him as well. You've got the Frank Herbert book, and you're drinking right. a spiced Coke. Yes. Wow. Getting they would have that in the shit, Empire. To be honest with Both you. of your guys' eyes are blue. I'm just sitting over here <laughs> believing in the false prophet. I don't, I don't understand. Yeah, I think you're on Giddy Prime. You're black and white right now. <laughs> yeah, That's yeah. Right. We'll just put you in chroma. Um, I did 3D print a nose thing in like that a is day. Amazing. Yeah. I had some bendable filament. Suit. Yeah, yeah. You're recycling yeah. your body's water. The blue eyes is yeah, incredible. <laughs> I'm proud of, it. I'm proud of it. Yeah. It's a wild episode so far. <laughs> it stuck out good. Crazy movie that I'm very excited to talk about. Mike said we've done an episode before. Go back and listen to that. We give our opinions, like you said, on the David Lynch one, part one as well. Just to refresh, I'll say, guys, I'm not a Frank Herbert head. This is a a book that my dad had in his little sci-fi library, but I never went to. I never grabbed for. Um, And I love David Lynch, and I hate that that movie exists, so I've always had a bad feeling towards Dune. Mm. Fair. I still kind of, I mean, I have a soft spot for the the Lynch version. As, As crazy as it is, as a mess of it as it is, but just the attempt, I mean... There's some really wild stuff in that movie, and I still love it to this day. Yeah, fair, fair. Um, it has its uh, charm, you know, but I think in comparison to 2021, um, you know, I, I mentioned um, I really liked 2021 at the time, and I wanted to stay in that world for like six more hours. Um, yeah. 
upon completion, but it didn't feel complete. So we'll see how I'm feeling after this. But I think if my garb is anything, I probably liked it. Well, that was always the problem with the Lynch version mm -hmm. is that, you know, for years and years, they said this movie, this novel is unadaptable. It's one of the great unadaptable novels. Uh, Joe Dorosky wanted to do this crazy version in the 60s. Um, there's a documentary called Joe Dorosky's Dune that you can watch. Um, never got made, but uh, it's like this, you know, this psychedelic space opera. It's got all these crazy ideas. They give it to David Lynch, who, let me remind you, uh, turned down the opportunity to direct Return of the Jedi. Right. Uh, George Lucas wanted <laughs> David Lynch so to direct right. Return of the Jedi. Turn that no. down. He accepted Dune. No, uh, Dune. <laughs> well, that's the source. <laughs> There's no Star Wars long. without Dune. The spice must flow, George. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, <laughs> oh man! But in making, in, in you know, Villeneuve realized you can't make this novel into one two-hour or even three-hour movie. It's just not possible. There's too much going on. Um, so he split it into two movies, right? So the Lynch problem was always that you know, and that movie is only like two hours long. And he tried to fit the entire novel into the movie. If you watch the second half of that movie, it's like this three-hour movie the cliff notes version, right? Where they're mm -hmm. just speeding yeah, through the like second half of the novel. 20 minutes of the end of that movie. It's like, here you go. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh my God. It's, it's very disorienting. But, mm -hmm. So, you know, Denis Villeneuve had the right idea with this and uh, I'm excited to talk about it. Like I said, I just got back from an IMAX screening. Uh, wow. I didn't know you did today. IMAX too. That's incredible. Yeah. I had to see it in IMAX and let me tell you, it was worth it. The, the sensory experience of watching that movie at IMAX insane I, I highly recommend seeing it in imax if you haven't seen it yet normies uh great experience and i'm super high on that spice melange right now ready to talk the film wow. Dune part two hell yeah hell yeah well i think waiting is the pod killer should we just go ahead and jump right into it uh <laughs> dune part two normies like us let's do it let's do it let's do it mike just said because <laughs> we're back and we're gonna talk the ultimate power this episode, of course, desert power, because we are talking Dune desert Part power. Two, mm -hmm. uh, the Denny Villeneuve, uh, new Warner Brothers blockbuster hit. We can say today too, uh, it's made quite a bit of money. It seems to be like mm. the highest grossing thing since Oppenheimer, right? And Barbie as well, uh, theatrically. Which I also so saw on IMAX Oppenheimer. But mm -hmm. um, before we jump into the movie, I did want to ask you guys. So I just saw this. Uh, I wanted to ask you about the trailers and things before the movie, because I don't know if you guys had this experience, but I showed up, my movie was, uh, the listed time on the ticket, right? was 2.45 PM. Mm -hmm. Um, so I got there, you know, in time for the movie nowadays, the trailers and bullshit and everything in front of the movie ah. are so long. The movie did not start until 3.20. Oh so man. 35 minutes of trailers before the movie. And I was like, this is insane. That's um, nuts. Yeah, so uh, that was interesting, but there was some some trailers that I found interesting. Some that I was like, uh, I have no interest in this. Um, but did you guys get the Furiosa trailer? I wanted to ask. Huh. I did not, but I also went to the bathroom during trailers, knowing it was a three-hour movie. <laughs> so I was like, let's preempt this. So it could have happened, smart. but I wasn't there. Yeah. Mike also always does the cool thing and goes to the draft house. You get the Alamo experience, That's right? right. That for this one, which is super mm -hmm. dope. Jacob, usually we go to the same theaters, but since you went to an IMAX, I'm assuming we did not. But I, I did go to our standard theater and did get the Furiosa trailer. Uh, and yeah, I, I don't a... think got as many as you got. I think I only got two I got, more. So. They just kept coming. IMAX insane. might that's load them up. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It was it was yeah. an AMC because that's where you know they had the IMAX, the AMC. Uh, people clapped when the Nicole Kidman uh, video comes on for the AMC. Did you get the new one? Yes, I think that it's a new one. Oh wow! People yeah. cheered and clapped when Nicole Kidman showed up. Incredible. I was like, "This is amazing." Yeah. Um, and then I got these trailers, and a lot of them were like. I don't know if they're specifically for IMAX because some of them, like I saw Furiosa mm -hmm. and Kong versus Godzilla or X Godzilla. Whatever. Yeah. Yeah. The fanfic. Yeah. And that one said filmed for IMAX. So they're really trying to push you to see all these movies in IMAX. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, did you get that there's... vampire one with that, that uh, new one from the people who did uh, the scream movies, the, the radio silence people? Oh no, I didn't get that okay. one. The little girl vampire movie looked very strange. I have seen that before, hmm. okay. yeah. But I got, you know, Ghostbusters, 
Oh yes, I no can't interest. Trust oh you know god, maybe I did uh, a thousand trailers. Yeah, <laughs> Quiet Place Day One. I did not get that. Uh, no. Civil War, the new Alex Garland. The Watchers. Movie. The Watchers. I didn't. I That's a new M Night Shyamalan's uh, daughter movie. Yeah. Oh, no. didn't get that. I don't know. I got. Well, um, how about size a house real quick? Because I got to say, mine was pretty packed. Oh yeah, mine was mine was Fair. pretty packed. Although I was lucky. No one on either side of me. So I was sitting, I was like kind of isolated, nice. which I like. I didn't have strangers, you know, in my, right, in my right. business. Um, in my business. <laughs> <laughs> right, right. But yeah. A million I trailers. Look at this sand. <laughs> the Furiosa trailer, though, I was like, I okay, fuck this that's coming out bucket. soon. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Leave me alone with my Dune popcorn yeah, bucket. Leave me yeah, 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 give Furiosa me some space. Up. I can't imagine that on IMAX. That must have been super cool. That yeah, was insane. Yeah. And that was the one of the few that I was like, all right, I'm genuinely interested in this. Another one was the new Mean Monkeys, uh, Planet of the oh, Apes. I did not get Mean Monkeys. Out. Right. Yeah, no, we didn't get Mean Monkeys yeah, either. Yeah, got that. I got this uh, Zendaya tennis movie, uh, no, which is very strange. No, I did not get that either. <laughs> She's like <laughs> having a threesome Zendaya, with two guys. I don't know what's going on. He but... says, I love my little white boys in that trailer. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> yeah. Um, Gives me yeah. strength. But uh, I was at the Alamo, small screen, because it they, they was selling out everywhere. So I had to, you know, catch his catch can. So we were in a little bit smaller theater, but still, you know, sold out. Yeah. Um, yeah. Well, of course, you know, I love Denis Villeneuve, the French-Canadian director. Denis de la Vadoune. <laughs> de la right. hey, uh, So can, can I say real quick, I want to say yeah. maybe both of your guys, one of your favorite directors or modern favorite directors, because mm -hmm. both of you guys are so in the pocket for Blade Runner 2049. That's yeah. right. Mike's favorite movie, probably. Maybe of all ever. Time now. <laughs> Maybe ever of all time. No, yeah. I, I, I do watch it a lot because I'm working on a project. But yeah, I think it's better than the original narratively. It's shot incredibly. And yeah, I'm a fan of uh, Denny. And I was ex after Dune 1, I'm like, this guy's crazy. So I was, I was super stoked. And I'm a fan of his. I haven't seen his filmography. So I still got to catch prisoners and arrival. Yeah, his, and stuff. Recent, his recent filmography, I mean, people are holding it up and saying, this guy is the new, he's kind of become the new Christopher Nolan in that he's the the film bro kind of guy where everyone's like, you got to see fucking Villeneuve, man. Like, but I, you know, I comparing him to Christopher Nolan, it's kind of like. Stylistically, I, kinda, I don't think there's a match at all. Like, I don't think no. they're similar. Hey, Lucas or something. Like, yeah. I, some, somebody bigger. Hmm. But he's been hitting on all cylinders lately. I mean, Arrival, love that one. Uh, Sicario prisoners and blade runner 2049 mm -hmm. um dune one. which i don't know if i would put it over the original blade runner but i think i love them both and they're both and they're pretty close to me it's a hard because blade runner the original blade runner was so influential just in its aesthetics and stuff that blade runner 2049 wouldn't exist without blade Runner. right, right? but to be able to make a sequel that doesn't let down the original like that's a really hard thing to do with blade runner so like you know that shows a yeah. skill and a craft you know, that a few directors have yeah, making a good sequel to a movie from 40 years ago or 50 years ago, um, pretty hard yeah. to do. And then following up that with making this notoriously unfilmable novel and making it a huge blockbuster hit and a critically acclaimed hit. I mean, he's kind of, you know, he's hitting on all cylinders right now. Yeah, he's doing good. Colin, what about you? Where's your, how how far in the pocket you know, or out of the pocket? I've never <laughs> seen Arrival um wow. i i super love um the hugh jackman one um prisoners. prisoners prisoners thank you which i have on dvd very oddly enough um yeah i don't know i don't know uh and and again to to set it up i was very cold on dune part one because i was one of those huge critic guys who said yo to stop that movie where you do is such bullshit that is not a full movie Mm -hmm. uh, so obviously coming into this, I was kind of loaded for Bear 2 and kind of thinking, can he land and fix this thing? Did uh, you guys watch the first one before going to this one? I did. I did rewatch okay. it, and I did rewatch the David Lynch one as well. All right. Jacob, did you? I, I rewatched part one back in November because I decided, like Lord of the Rings, Dune is a Thanksgiving movie for me. Mm, okay. And <laughs> part it's about two, family. Desert Turkey. <laughs> that's right. And part two was originally uh, supposed to come out last fall, got uh, postponed uh, due to the strikes that happened in Hollywood this past year. Right. Uh, they had to push it back to now. Um, 
So I was like, man, I really wanted to see Dune 2 back in November. I didn't get to see it, so I'm going to rewatch Dune 1. Um, did not rewatch the Lynch version recently, but love it, as I said. Right. Um, and just, you know, shout out to Arrival. You guys got to watch Arrival. Maybe his first entry into sort of sci-fi, uh, right. dealing a lot with communication and stuff. Very interesting movie. Um, but Hi, um, my list. You know, yeah. Ranger. But I did not watch it before. I watched it after, and that was an interesting thing. I'll maybe uh. talk about it at the end, kind of looking back at the first one that I was like, Colin, like, eh, it's not a whole movie. I don't know. And after watching the second one, uh, you know, some people have argued it makes it better, and I'll let you know if I agree or disagree with that. Yeah. Um, but Jacob, well, that's, oh, I yeah. can't breathe. <laughs> oh, like, no, put no. your... My water. water um, your precious water. <laughs> should we... <laughs> I don't spill your water frame. Should we um, bring listeners up to speed with where we left off with Paul Atreides yeah. at the end of Dune yes. 1, I guess, kind of went, where we well, where come from? Yes, and I wanted to say... Explain I mean, what that movie is. Yeah, yeah. I, I understand the criticism when part one came out that it was sort of an awkward place to leave it. I felt that it would make more sense once this, this movie came out. And the thing you have to understand is I'm never going to watch part one again and not oh, yeah. immediately watch part two right. Yeah. afterwards. Right. It would mm -hmm. be like watching fellowship of the ring and not watching, you know, the other two. So right, right. Well, Mike will get his hands on this and he will make us a movie just called Dune. I'm very excited for that. So thank yes. you. In advance, yeah. buddy. We'll do another super cut. Is, absolutely. They, they, commercially, they couldn't have made a six hour movie. So they had to split it somewhere. And, you Looking tell Zach back, that. You tell Zach that. <laughs> well, that's true. This is a little bit. So like, kind of Rebel Moon. It yeah. rivals Rebel Moon, I'd say, in quality and scope. Rebel you know, Moon, movies, Halo, that's for sure. Dude. We're doing good on sci-fi lately. I gotta say, guys, we're crushing yeah. it. Oh yeah, man, two oh, great sci-fi movies. Um, <laughs> but it is interesting. I mean, where that movie left off is exactly where this movie picks up, right? I mean, literally, this movie picks up right after that last movie ended uh paul mm -hmm. gets in the knife fight with jemis uh or dr Mbenga. dr Mbenga. <laughs> How dare that's you. right as we later come <laughs> to know for, uh, strange new world fans out there um and but they're... broadly like you yeah. know the what whole like his yeah. yeah like why what are they in iraq it's just a little right yeah yeah so we're explain that spice before I, uh, before I hit word somebody's. for word <laughs> yeah so paul atreides son of duke leto atreides uh, obviously, the House of Atreides is one of the great houses of the Galactic Empire, if you will. There's the Harkonnens, different great Can I correct houses. Correct you real quick. Yeah, it is Duke Jared Leto Atreides, <laughs> and it does take 30 oh, man. seconds to get to Arrakis. That is very important to point out. That's right. That's right. Right. Oh, um, <laughs> Thirty seconds from yes. Mars. I hear. You. I see you. Um, yes. Good thing that he's not in this movie, though. Blade Runner could have been. We dodged Blade a bullet. Could have been. <laughs> well. And that's interesting, by the way, because uh, Villeneuve wanted David Bowie in that role for Blade, Tw Blade Runner 2049. Oh, wow. Uh, but he died Whoa. before that, you know, they filmed that's it. That's right. So he had to replace I did him not know that. Lito. That would have made that movie that would have been awesome. very good in yeah, my mind. Yeah, because I think wow. he's I the have... weakest part of that movie for me. Yes, I, I would agree like with him. that. Yeah. You could double feature The Labyrinth in 2049 <laughs> at that point. Um, uh, that's right. Interesting. Um, but, so we pick up, you know, so... Obviously, the, the Atre House of Treaties is going to this planet called Arrakis. It's a desert planet that has this spice melange, which is the spice of life, if you will. It, it, it nice. can be used as a drug. It is used to fuel space travel ships or ships for space travel. So it has very many uh, important uses. It's the most uh, uh, valuable resource in the galaxy, if you, mm -hmm. if you will. Um the Harkonnens, who are the sort of rivals of the Atreides, House Atreides, they're yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, yeah. in control of spice production, but the Emperor has decreed that Atreides will take over. Um, they're kind of fighting. Then there's this whole plot where the Emperor and uh, Baron Harkonnen kind of team up to assassinate Duke Leto Atreides and destroy the House Atreides mm -hmm. uh, entirely was their plan, but of course... Paul and his mother, Lady Jessica, escape. Lady Jessica is a Bene Gesserit uh, witch. <laughs> yep, yep, yep. <laughs> you're, of course. You're, what you're saying, 
absolutely is true and absolutely <laughs> does make sense. But the way you so casually threw off, he escapes with his mother, Lady <laughs> Jessica is, of course, a bit of a <laughs> Yes. And she, she has a woman power. With the she force. has the weirding way power. She can use the voice the to way, control people. The voice. <laughs> yes. Uh, and the Bene Gesserit are an organization that have been basically practicing eugenics for generations. And trying we're going to learn about uh, them more, yeah. Yeah, but they're trying to bring about the prophecy of bringing the Kwisatz Haderach, the Chosen One, uh, into being by basically mixing bloodlines of great houses and stuff, which will come up in this movie. Oh. Mm -hmm. um, and so what happens then? So they escape. Uh, they kind of run into the Fremen. Uh, we fight Fremen, which are the native people of Arrakis who are being oppressed by the Harkonnens and, and everyone else because everyone wants the spice. But, you know, obviously the, the Fremen want to control the planet because it's their planet, blah, mm -hmm. blah, blah. So we pick up. Paul and Jessica are with the Fremen traveling back to their siege. Uh, you know, we have Stilgar. Uh, <laughs> you knew what it was it called. Is. You're right. It is. <laughs> I love it. You guys are so yeah. into this. I love this. This is so good. <laughs> Yeah, but it literally opens like yeah, like minutes, hours, like not long yes. after because they're transporting yeah, with, the body with... of Jameis back, you know, for funeral right. rites and stuff. And so that's too. what I'm saying is that um, part part one being a cliffhanger. That's that was a temporary problem for before this movie came out. Now you can watch these movies back to back, and it's like, oh yeah, it makes total sense. It's a continuation basically. It's like one long movie. Sure, mm -hmm. I, but it's just interesting that it ends on that question of will the Fremen take them in, and of course that's the overarching theme of this movie. But but just real quick, well not real quick. Here's what I want to do now. <laughs> you outline that first film. We're gonna jump in. We're gonna talk about this whole second movie. We didn't even said like any of the actors' names. We have so much. That oh my true. gosh, we have yes. five thousand <laughs> things we're gonna talk about this episode. So excited! I'm so excited. I want to say up top real quick. I want to get all of our first impressions in. Because uh, I don't want to like hide anything mm -hmm. about how I feel about this movie, how I I'm gonna color this whole episode, which is to say, and I'll just I'll start first to give initial reactions here and say like, I fucking loved this movie. Mm, I thought yes. it was fucking awesome. I thought it was incredible. It did, in my opinion, solve that problem of ending on a cliffhanger because apparently thematically that's what you do in these movies. Given that this one ends on a cliffhanger mm -hmm. as well. That's um, right. Well. Ideally, this movie will be a trilogy, which we'll talk about too. Right, yeah. totally. Um, and yes. my, my big point that I'm going to want to go through this whole episode to say is like, I think it's going to be a struggle to point out who does the best performance in this movie. This is a mm. film that is incredibly acted. Yes. Insane yes. cast. Everyone's given their best. Um, I mean, I can shout out some of my personal favorites in a minute here. Uh, but you just got right. out of it. Yeah. How do you feel yeah. now? Like, it's fresh. Yeah, please, please. Yeah. Well, How are you feeling? Doug? First of all, I believe I was the highest on part one back when we did that episode. Mm -hmm. No, I listened to that back in 2021. For sure. Um, and because I knew, I was like, look, you don't understand. Once part two comes out, it's all going to make sense. And even if you look at the Rotten Tomatoes ratings for these movies, part one got a respectable 83%. This movie is like 97% with 144 reviews. And right. People are like, okay, this actually makes the last movie better in retrospect because now you're understanding everything that was going on. So, I mean, yeah. it should be no surprise that I, of course, loved it. And uh, yeah, I, I absolutely loved it. It was great. My yeah, well, I, I hated it, clearly, um, <laughs> based on my get up. Um, no, I thought, I thought it was incredible. Um, and it does make the first movie better. I can go into detail kind of later on about that, but it, it certainly does. Like having the full context, yeah. you're like, damn, this guy was sowing seeds that we didn't even realize were going to grow into anything. Like it's crazy right. how cohesive they are as a unit. Um, but I, I love this. Um, it has a much more satisfying climax, even though it's a cliffhanger. And they both end with knife fights. So they're kind of the same thing. That's Spoilers, true. you know, whatever. I thought that too. It's very yeah. Like, here's another I loved poetry. It. it rhymes. This poetry. film, I thought, I really thought <laughs> uh -huh. that line while I was watching it. This film, and I guess in combination with the first film, in conjunction with them, I guess. Because I feel like Jacob as well, that these are part of this whole. And I, I would assume the third one will be as well. It feels mm -hmm. very much that they're in tandem with each other these films make the david lynch film better 
because when I watch that now, mm -hmm. I understand what he was going for. Not even yes. in a way of like, right. oh, I understand the material he was trying to adapt. No, no, no. Again, I can be whatever level familiar I am with Frank Herbert's Dune. If you say it out loud, it does make sense, whatever that plot is, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, like the same the basic imagery, points are there. Yeah. Yes, but the imagery David Lynch is trying to convey, you can see Denny Villeneuve being like, oh, I can actually accomplish that now in a way that you watch the other Lynch film and you're like, oh, he's just like, it's just, it's just condensed. Like, it's just, I know that's so obvious to say, but it's just like, it's just this much smaller pared down film. Yeah. yeah. God. And it's wild. You know, I was watching uh, the Red Letter Media video that they did on dune one a few years ago and oh comparing yeah the lynch version to that and they said something that i thought was like a really good point um as a, I, i've also read the the novel of course the first novel i've read uh dune messiah and i've read some of the other i've read some of the brian herbert kevin j anderson uh continuations of the franchise so my children of dune he's dead and his son is taking over like the he's only wrote he two wrote, books. He, no he wrote it? six books oh, uh, he wrote right. six yeah books. his last book was like in 1985 but uh hmm. frank herbert and then he died his his son brian herbert kind of took over the franchise and wrote a bunch of prequels and just expanding the world oh wow and they're more sort of hit or miss it's more like the star wars eu novels type of thing um Fair. which you know if you like really cheesy sci-fi novels then you might like them but they're i mean dune is the best novel that i've read of the of the dune franchise mm -hmm. um sure <laughs> but the thing about dune is it's a very weird book right it's very psychedelic there's all this you know with the spice and everything it's all very weird and 60s uh drug inspired right and in mm -hmm. fact frank herbert was very inspired basically his two imagine. biggest inspirations in writing this book were psilocybin mushrooms and uh islam right so those were his mm -hmm. two inspirations <laughs> writing this novel um so it's a very weird book and that's what david lynch was trying to portray the weirdness of it right and so red letter media said something they said David Lynch took all the weird parts of the book and made them even weirder and act, you know, accentuated them. Villeneuve mm -hmm. takes all the weird parts of the book and treats them as if they're not weird. <laughs> That's right. Perfect. Yeah. That's, That's a great so, way to put it. Cause mm -hmm. I do want to say with this too, we're watching Dune. Obviously you've seen the first one spoilers for Dune too, but the special effects in this, like it's insane. Like it never feels like I see a green screen. Like it feels so no. grounded and lived in even no. the weird stuff. Like the, what they've put to film is, is it's wild. It's inc some it's of the best effects real... I've ever seen. Yeah. It's a cinematic achievement. I mean, it had a budget of 190 million, which is still a lot, but compared to some of these bloated blockbusters that we've gotten shot for $300 million that don't even look like it. I mean, this Fast is doing the Furious a lot was 360. Yeah. yeah, that's my, come on. Wild. <laughs> and that's something yeah. that I think Villeneuve is really good at is showing a sense of scale, right? And he did that with Blade Runner 2049, Arrival. Like, he's really good at that sense of scale, that kind of epicness. And that's what this movie has in terms of the visuals, the sound design. Like, it's all so, like, epic, you know? It he is. said he was inspired by Lawrence of Arabia, but it is like a throwback to like when movies felt fucking huge. Like I haven't seen anything yeah. that felt this grand since Lord yeah. of the Rings in theaters. Like it, it's crazy. It feels like a throwback almost to like I had a feeling I hadn't had before. Oh, Dude, in a long time. I mean, are you just, yeah. is your head just craned back yeah. the entire time? I mean, this is why you say you got to see an IMAX because it's just go so again. insane. Yeah. Um, and, you know, I saw like Oppenheimer and IMAX and that was fine, but it didn't really utilize the IMAX in the way that this movie does. Like just the epicness and the scale of it all. It's mm -hmm. insane. But um, I, haven't been, I haven't been to a theater in a long time. This, uh, even for a normal size screen, I knew this is one you see on a fucking big screen, dude. Oh, mm -hmm. yeah, for sure. And I saw the um, first one on a TV and I was fucking enamored. So this is the first time I've seen the Dune world on a big screen, not even IMAX. So right. blown away. Didn't they, wasn't there some pandemic fuckery? Didn't they release it same day or something? It was day and day. It was it HBO Max. Yeah, it was mm -hmm. when HBO Max, they were doing that model, but it was also in theaters. So I actually saw part one in IMAX as well because I specifically went out to see it in IMAX. Wow. You know, I saw Good it the you. first time on HBO, but then I was like, I want to I want to see this in IMAX while it's available. Mm -hmm. Um but uh, yeah, as a movie, I think it's amazing as an adaptation. As a 
as a book reader of the original novel, I do have some minor nitpicks. Uh, I do think it's by far the best adaptation that we've had. Mm -hmm. uh, but I do still have some nit nitpicks that that uh, maybe not everyone agrees with, but there's certain changes and they're pretty minor in terms of the overall scope of the story. But um, and I understand why they had to do them, but we can obviously it seems like, again, like you're saying, some of the weirdness maybe even is pared down or just sort of normalized a bit. But it also just as a casual observer, I'll, I'll just point this out as well, not knowing sort of where these plots go. When I keyed into that, the plot of this film, which I would say is remarkably challenging in that it is about a group of people becoming radicalized and you as an audience are supposed to sort of feel incredibly sympathetic to that, mm -hmm. which a lot of real world mirroring going on right, right. now. Yes. Um, you know, I just I found that to be fucking fascinating. And again, that a, that a studio would allow it to have that message, I think, is pretty impressive as well, regardless mm -hmm. if they are maybe taking out. I did read some stuff that people wanted the magic baby and, you, you know, some of this fucking yeah, legendarily in the Lynch that. version. Yes, yeah, yes, yeah, yes, yeah. I can't yes. wait to talk about it. Um, um, just real quick, some other just yes. general things I want to point out, just that, again, as a casual viewer, when the words nuclear warhead were said out loud in this movie yes, I, yeah atomics atomics i squeed in my seat i was so excited i thought this is where this is going and again when you say this sort of like 60s old school thinking that the book had jacob of like mushrooms and stuff the fact that too there was the fear of like nuclear fallout and stuff like tied in I thought, yeah that's so interesting of the times mm -hmm. for sure and i do want to point out that the world of Dune takes place in the far future of our world. So like and everything. What is, what is she, Florence Pugh say? It is 10,000 something, something. Yeah. Something. Mm -hmm. So all of Earth's history happened in the past. So it's not like a different universe or anything like that. Like it's, it's our universe just in the far future. And so, name Paul has had an incredible run from the start yes. of time. One of Jesus's best friends <laughs> to the year 10,000. Right. Well, with the religious That's, themes, that has to be on yeah. purpose for Herbert, but I do like I in was... the universe continuity, Paul is just that popular of a name. Paul, yeah. Paul, Duncan. Yeah, and some people yeah. joke about like, oh, they have this crazy sci-fi, but the main character's name is Paul. But then I would say, I love it. Luke. Okay, is the is the main character of Star Wars not Luke? Yes. Another Luke. disciple. <laughs> Luke? Right. Oh, yeah. Um, oh. uh, yes. Jacob, can I just say a quick note? Because yeah. I'm, I'm glad that you mentioned it's in the universe, because I was really upset by one minor thing that they're like, Oh, he's named after the kangaroo mouse. I'm like, do they have Australia here? Is one of the houses just Australia? Yeah. Like, why is this a word? That's but wild. I guess that's why. Right. So. That's why. So even in the books, I mean, they talk about like history and stuff. And that's why in the part one, he speaks Chinese to uh, Dr. Dewey. Right. And um, I would say one of yeah, my, yeah, yeah. my um, nitpicks is that the sort of uh, like the Islamic uh, uh you know, of it all, the, the um, influence of the mm -hmm. Muslim religion. Obviously, the Fremen are Arabic-coded people, and that's well, pretty much Well, the word Mu'adib <laughs> next to Mujahideen, the, yes. the, the group right. of, you know, Islamic radicals at the time that, you know, like Rocky Three or I'm sorry, Rambo Three, Rambo literally three, goes yeah. like to the brave warriors of the Mujahideen, like yeah. right. very different well, times. And, and they fun. talk about, you know, Indeed. obviously at the end, they're talking about going on a holy war and stuff like that. Yes. It's he not called a jihad. holy war in Does the book. Yeah, it's called jihad, jihad which yeah. Yeah. of course means holy war. Yeah. They, they sort of whitewash certain aspects for the movie. They took out a lot of the Arabic references, even yeah. obviously the words like Lisan al-Gaib and Shai Hulu, mm. these are inspired by the Arabic language. Right. All the Fremen languages inspired by the Arabic language. And I understand why they did it for the movie because they didn't want to court controversy, you know, real or imagined. Obviously, right. there's things going on in the world right now. It's it's, it's a touchy subject, so yeah, yeah, they yeah. wanted to sort of avoid that aspect of it. I kind of think like the it's very important to the story. Like these these are oppressed people, the Fremen, who are fighting their back against their oppressors, and there are obviously real world. Uh, you know, things happening now that are very similar. To well, that. and it's also right. about religious fanaticism. Yes. And this is what's funny because some people uh, criticize this movie and they say, well, it's just a, a white savior narrative, right? Right. But I think if you think it's a white savior narrative, you're kind of missing the whole point of Dune, which is that it's a cautionary tale about 
putting your faith in charismatic leaders, right? Religious fanaticism, the character of Stilgar, which I'm excited to talk about. Like, uh, yeah. you know, this has been seen in history in the past and, you know, it's a cautionary tale. So in the, in Dune Messiah, you know, Paul Atreides is, uh, comparing himself to Hitler and Genghis Khan. Yo, um, uh, so, geez. you know, you, <laughs> Danny Villa knew the point of the right movie now. is that, Ooh, uh -oh. <laughs> yeah, well, right. you start to, well, you see him as a hero to begin with, and then you realize, yeah. Oh, he's leading people on a jihad will, where billions will die and this kind of thing. And he he's resisting that actively throughout the movie because he knows that if he comes to power, billions will die. And he's trying to avoid that. But once you start the train of religious fanaticism, it's very hard to stop, right? Yeah, I think by the end, you know, if you're watching the same movie I am, you are very much not on his side. And you've kind of shifted no. to Chani being the person you're you're yeah. yes. teaming up with going forward. Well, anybody essentially, says, I can see all of time and all of space at every second. You're like, Ooh. yeah, <laughs> no. Yeah. At, at its base level, what it is, is, is Paul is a teenager who is the product of eugenics from the Bene Gesserit who is hopped up on psychedelic drugs and believing that he's the Messiah. And then millions of people are following. takes over a cult. <laughs> right. Yes. And they also were telling the people of that planet for yes. a thousand years that there's going to be a guy yes. coming. Yeah. He's going to save you. Yes. So the even that's manufactured. Colton says, my son's that guy. You're yeah. Like, oh my God. Right. And some people think that's so prophecy. Wild. Some people think that's Bene Gesserit uh, propaganda. Mm -hmm. right. Literally the first line of Dune part one is Chani saying, who will our next oppressors be, right? Yes. As it cuts to Paul Atreides. Yes. So it's yes. not exactly subtle wow. about what's going Damn, on. Damn, brilliant. Yep, wow. that's right. Wow, dogs. Um, so, and once we get to Dune Messiah, if anyone still thinks that, you know, it's a hero, it's a white savior narrative, it's going to be, you know, Herbert surprised. explicitly wrote that because people read the book, right? From what I understand. And they were like, wow, what a cool hero. And he's like, guys, 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 guys. <laughs> well, that's yeah, not I guess that's what he was going for yeah. by the end of the novel. But a lot <laughs> of right. people pick up on that. <laughs> it's like people like Homelander. <laughs> like, hey, that Homelander, you know? Yeah. It's like the right, same thing. Yeah. It is. It is. <laughs> and you see God. his evolution from sort of a naive young boy mm -hmm. who to this... Uh, genocidal dictator who takes over by the end of this movie i was pitching um to a friend of the show ex kaita we went together i was like what this could have been there's a universe where timothy chalamet played anakin in revenge of the sith and like this is that because star wars yes. borrows from dune like this is such a good fall for from sure. grace kind of arc in this this second chapter and I, I really am here for it absolutely obviously george lucas took a lot of inspiration from dune just obviously tatooine arrakis the sarlacc the word know, spice worms yeah <laughs> yeah it's yeah not exactly subtle right no um and that includes the prequels with anakin like anakin's arc is very similar uh and he's sort of seen as the chosen one who will bring balance to the force all this yep. stuff right it's, it's very Prophecy. similar yeah yep um but yeah what's interesting too i think is we're talking about all this stuff about the movie but all we've been getting into is theme because it's it's yeah. it's yes. so rich in theme and it's like we're not even movie. describing the scenes it's a big movie with big scope and it, it that's wonderful and that's kind of why i like it so much yes well let's talk about colin like you said the cast in this movie is absolutely let's say some packed. names because you were you yeah. were just literally shouting out so let's say paul atreides real quick so little timmy Little Timmy Chalamet, who yes. I did see recently. Did you guys see the Wonka? Did you guys have see not his most it. recent offerings? It's coming out on HBO soon. I saw it was they're advertising it's coming soon, so I'll probably check he that out. He is such there. a delightful little twink. I just <laughs> love him so much. And in this, yes. I gotta say, you know, he gives exactly what you would expect, but when it leads up to him basically giving a Henry V Saint Crispin's Day speech. I thought he fucking knocked that transformation of this downfall of this prophet type character out of the fucking park. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And he really needed the range to, you know, make that arc believable where in part one, he's, you know, like talking to his dad, like, Oh, what I, what if I'm not the future of house of treaties? Like, what if I can't do it? Like, I'm not like you, I can't dad, lead people and all this stuff. I like my wet planet. <laughs> we got to go to yeah. a dry planet. Ugh. Yeah. People, People say in the first one, movie, things are happening to him, you know, mm -hmm. throughout the movie. He's just reacting to, we're getting attacked. That, like, he's just reacting in the first one, where this one, he's now kind of taking action, even though he's resisting it for part of it. So he's more active in this, for sure. Absolutely. 
And um, of course, you know, the Bene Gesserit's whole plan is they, they, so Lady Jessica is Duke Leto's concubine who they, she's not his wife, you know, she's his concubine. Right, of course. And mm -hmm. they, the Bene Gesserit are inserting all their people to these different great houses to try to bring forth the Kwisatz Haderach by intermixing bloodlines and all this stuff. So mm -hmm. it's, it's a, you know, it's all part of the plan. Um, that he's born, but they also say like, oh, there's other prospects, of course, too, which we will yeah. talk about. But and they were kind of all their eggs. Yeah, no, they're not putting all their eggs in one basket. But they also, um, they're kind of pissed off at Jessica because they wanted her to have a girl. She had a son anyway, so she's right. kind of going rogue and like, so she's really pushing. She's kind of opposed to the Bene Gesserit core in this film too, where she's like, no, it's my son. Fuck off, yeah. right? She's really wants to make this thing she happen. Is constantly yeah. accused, which of Rebecca Ferguson, the prophecy. Yes, which Rebecca Ferguson yes. and we'll give I Timmy is on my list as well. But my first shout out here, I was just blown away by the performance of a woman who basically becomes Lady Macbeth. I mean, it, it just is what it is, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I loved her in part one. I should say when when they announced the casting, even before part one, I was super excited with the casting. I was like, oh, these are great choices. You know, Timothy Chalamet, Rebecca Ferguson, Oscar Isaac, I thought was incredible as duke leto like mm -hmm. they're nailing the casting and then with part two they were nailing it even more and i was like yeah oh man i can't wait um but rebecca ferguson we we all love her you know mission impossible we talked about it mm -hmm. um, i could have used an eye patch in this movie that's my one complaint a hundred percent yeah um but she does you know and it is supposed to be jarring you see her with the lettering on her face the the garb of the fremen mm -hmm. and it's like this white lady um but they're, you know, she's becoming a priest of priestess of this cult, like you said, and becoming mm -hmm. the new reverend mother. And it's and she absolutely nails it for sure. Yeah. And I guess the vehicle of that, too, to bring us to one of our other favorite guys in this still guard, like he's helping that happen, too, because he believes in the prophecy so much. He's the one who's like, no, Jessica's got to be the reverend mother. Like, like it's all like part yeah. of the plan in a way. And it's 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 interesting yes. to see who's turning what dials. And I still don't fully understand because it's very complex in the way. Uh, yeah. kind of things play out essentially yeah lady jessica is kind of going rogue against the reverend mother of the Bene Gesserit, which is the charlotte rampling old lady character Yo. um mm -hmm. but let's talk about stillgar because yes. javier bardem oh my god wow oh wow, my wow. God. <laughs> he's this he's the standout of this movie for me because he wasn't a huge part of the first movie and this is kind of what i like about this movie some of the characters that were introduced in part one stillgar chani they don't have a lot to do in part one but they're like just wait they're going to be a huge part of part two and they were and then this movie does the same thing with florence Pugh, uh princess Irulan, sure. who right. doesn't have a lot to do in this movie but when we get to dune messiah yeah, she's going to be a big part of it yeah yes right <laughs> um but, be our bardem i am so yes. glad we did this episode before salazar's revenge oh, jacob because he's oh yeah someone who i'm like not always there on, mm. but this is such a, I mean, this is just so in favor of like that adage of like no small parts. Cause if you looked at this thing on paper, you'd be like, Oh, the guy who becomes kind of like the first apostle to this cult leader, yeah. you know, like, what is that? But the humanity he has and the different moments I could, I could shout out every single person yeah. who stays standing during that final speech Timothy gives when everybody mm. bows down to him. But the look on Javier Bardem's face in, in general, when he's, or specifically when he says like, and what will happen next to Arrakis and Timothy Chalamet says like, I'll turn it green. We're going to turn this place into paradise. Green paradise he yeah. looks like he has gone to heaven. Like he's <laughs> mm -hmm, yeah. acting in a way that you're just like, who would put their all in this level of a performance? But Javier Bardem does as Stilgar. Yeah. He's a true believer and he's there to kind of show there's, you know, all not all the Fremen are convinced of this like white boy from another planet who's gonna come in and become the prophet of their religion and all this stuff. No, it's actually good that he said <laughs> kangaroo mouse. It's actually really cool that yeah. he Yeah, that. he's constantly doing oh. mental gymnastics to well, like what's justify funny, right? it. Is <laughs> Paul keeps saying, like, look, I'm not the Messiah. I'm not that's the Messiah. What the Messiah like, would say well, look, he's the humble Messiah. Messiah. <laughs> I saw people pointing out Monty Python's life of O'Brien, where there's obviously a lot of these similar lines. Absolutely. But it is it is that level of it's it's commenting on it for him to 
to be so earnest in tweet yes. two is the difference though and it's just it's it's electrifying he is incredible yeah. best supporting actor maybe. it's like I mean, and, yeah. yeah yeah and you, you kind of feel bad of, uh, sorry go ahead yeah no he's he's truly like a true believer out of all of them. Like he believed the most in mm -hmm. Paul Muadib Atreides, Lisan Al Gaib. Right. Mm -hmm. um, but you know, I'm a fan of Javier Bardem as an actor. Like I've always liked him. Anton Chigurh, you know, no country for old men. Come yeah, on. Get a Josh Berlin um, reunion. That's so right. That's right. I hate <laughs> <laughs> um, and I am, ex and I like, I am super excited for the next Pirates movie just because of him, because I think he's going to be the standout of that movie too for me. Right. And, I feel like now, yeah. But he's channeling like the, you know, the uncle who is just like, he, he's, he's multi dimensional because he's joking around with Paul earlier in the movie. But then you see how serious his fanaticism really is by the end of it, where he will, he will literally follow Paul to the end of the world without questioning because he believes I will go... so hard space jihad for you paul like if you're gonna yeah. turn when this he, place green let's go when he yells at those teenagers and says excuse me we're praying like that is a very powerful moment you know he, yes. he has these fluctuations of personality jacob but you know that it. he has this core tenet that is just the the cornerstone of who he is this faith it's I think infectious it, yeah Absolutely. i think it's like highlighted or you know underlined it's just the exchange with him and paul where paul says you know i don't i don't believe that i'm the one or whatever he says it doesn't matter what you believe because yeah. I believe it. I'm like, dang. All right. Right. Like, and that's kind of when Paul realizes, like, this is taken on a life that I cannot I even stop now. Like, even mm -hmm. if I rejected becoming the Kwisatz Haderach and all this stuff, like, it wouldn't matter because they believe so much in me that there's nothing I can do to dissuade them of the fact that I'm not the Messiah. I, I, yeah. Try as I might to not become the Messiah, they still just see me becoming God the Messiah. Damn. And yeah, I guess on the opposite yeah. end of that, we have the skeptics, and you know, principal yes. among them is our our Chani. Um, Absolutely. Zendaya. It's when two Zendaya sides says of the coin, right? About yeah. About Javier Bardem. Well, of course he believes in you. He's southern. Can't you tell from his accent? Oh yeah. <laughs> yeah. So they say the southern Fremen are more fundamentalist. Yeah. The northern yes. Fremen are more questioning of the prophecy, mm -hmm. and they think that Lisan Al Gaib should be a Fremen, not an outsider yeah. like like Paul. Uh, right. And of course, Chani. Of his uh, words. Yeah. Chani has very complicated feelings because of course yeah. she over time grows to really care about Paul as a person on a personal level because they develop a relationship, of course. Mm -hmm. But she also is very skeptical about the prophecy and all this. She says, you know, obviously that's Ben and Jesser at propaganda. Like like that's how they enslave us through this prophecy. Hey, um, right. so so Mike, let's compare here. So what do you say is the better film from a Euphoria alumni? We talk Sydney hmm. Sweeney's Madam Web. Oh yeah. This film with Zendaya. <laughs> Ooh man, well they both have sweeping themes and scope, but I Zendaya That's just tight. might edge it out. Yeah. yeah. What I want to say That's about Zendaya, you know, she's always I've never disliked her in a movie. Spider never people really... adjacent, just really wanted to say. That's right. That's right. Both spider <laughs> movies. <laughs> Um, yeah, I've always people. liked her. I've never disliked her, but I've never thought like, oh, this is like a great actor. I think this is her best role that I've ever seen. Really? She's yeah. maybe my weakest in the cast, mm. honestly. I'm not in a total not dislike, but I'd love to hear what's making her stand out. For I you, think for when you get to the end where it's the juxtaposition of all these people, you know, worshiping Paul and she's just looking so troubled by it all. And then, you know, you get the whole Princess Irulan thing where he's going to marry her for political reasons, right? And this happens in the book. This is how the, exactly how the book ends where, you know, the, he defeats the emperor. He says, I'm going to marry your daughter and become the new emperor. I'll allow you to live. Chani is his true love and becomes his concubine in the book. Oh, so like Lady Jessica. That's very interesting. Wow, yeah. okay. And Lady Jessica actually talks to Chani and says, look, you don't understand. Like, he has to marry the princess for political reasons but you're his true his true wife she says because you are his true love mm -hmm. and actually in the book they have a son named leto young leto atreides no oh, second not in the movie yeah that's where um, jared comes in that's where jared comes in. <laughs> that's yeah. right jared played the uh, fetus in this movie didn't he yeah yeah <laughs> method but you know just the way i i don't know the way she acts with her face in this movie yeah like, it's just so expressive to me and the way she gets more and more concerned about Paul's path into becoming the Kwisatz Haderach and how much that kind of scares her and stuff. I thought she did really good.
Yeah, I would agree. It's it's subtle, but when you see her again react to the princess Erlon and stuff, it, like the whole theater was like the wind was taken out of him when he's like, "And I'll marry you." Yeah. And you see her reaction. We were like, "Fuck, Paul, yeah. dude, no." Because she's torn yeah. because she does care about him as a person, but also is very skeptical about the whole prophecy and everything. Right. Um, but I think it's well, her best fairness, role that I've on seen. Drugs, and he did say right beforehand, "I'm sorry, I have to do this." Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I see the future. <laughs> does he mean it? Forward. When he says, yeah. as long as I breathe, I'll love you. Does he mean it? I think he does, but he's I doing bad so. stuff. Yeah. 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 He does mean it. Um, he, he just like, think, you don't understand this, what I'm doing here. It's a big vision. It's like, it's a bad vision, buddy. Yeah. And he's actively resisting going south. Because as he says, like, if I go south, then I know the path that will lead to and, and billions will die. I can see it in my dreams. I think the book um, had the line. Yeah. If, if I go south, things are going to go south. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Famously. Um, <laughs> well, I'm sorry. So to go back, Jacob. Yeah. Is, so what you're saying, I'm sorry. Is this the first big book change? The the Leto Junior. He's born in the next one, or he would have been born in this movie. He's born in this one, and actually, oh. like Baron Harkonnen takes him captive at one oh, point. Wow. And that's crazy. Like that. <laughs> Interesting. Yeah. Well, and this is, and the other big change, of course, is uh, his sister, Paul's unborn sister, Aaliyah Atreides, who is in this movie but it's a little bit different of course um mm -hmm. because we don't see her we see one scene of course with anya taylor joy who has been cast to portray her and will be a big part of dune messiah as well mm -hmm. um but we here we have she's talking to lady jessica through she's un, you know lady jessica is pregnant and she's talking to her that is kind of that is from the book because basically when Jessica drinks the water of life, the mm -hmm. which is, of course is the poison from the Shai Hulud. Right. Uh, it's like Shai Hulud um, blood or whatever. Bile or it's something. Pure like. yeah. yeah. distilled uh, sand or spice, yeah. right? I mean, it's fucking pure, uncut drugs. Yeah, yeah, yeah it's shit, lethal. Basically. It's lethal to drink to everyone except like Bene Gesserit witches who are trained in you know accepting it. So of course, when he when Paul drinks it, people are like, that's, you're committing suicide. Like that's going to kill you. But a single um, tear drop. <laughs> yeah. Um, so th yeah, the big change is Aaliyah because of course in the book she does appear. And because Jessica drank the water of life when she was pregnant with Aaliyah, she is born and she become, she is like this young girl who speaks and acts like a fully grown woman. And she has special powers her this... mind is already expanded in the way that spice would expand an adult's mind. Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay. Uh, and of course, if you remember the David Lynch version, she does appear and she's like that little child, but she's yep. opened up by a, a you know, woman's voice and it's very strange. But she fights with a knife. Her, they call her Saint Aaliyah of the knife because she fights she's with a knife. Mm -hmm. uh, wow, really? I don't, wow, that's incredible. And she's the one that actually kills Baron Harkonnen in the book. And mm -hmm. Right. Lead, young Leto so a little bit changed a little bit simplified kind of maybe or streamlined for the, this movie um, and we do see you know he sees the vision of Anya Taylor-Joy who's going to play her in the future mm -hmm. um, yeah I so. think for Paul's arc you have to do that like you have to have him kind of finish this stuff with the Harkonnens and like really ascend to being a, a shithead for lack of a better term like he has yeah, yeah. to like he has to grab it like himself, and I think that works really well for the changes. Even though I didn't read the book, uh, hang me if you're a book reader and you think I'm wrong. But I think it really works here. Is yeah. Messiah a good book? Are the are the next ones considered good? I think Dune Messiah is good, and then there's like four more after that. I don't know all. There's like Children of Dune and all this stuff, and it continues mm -hmm. beyond the Paul Atreides story, where it continues with his children, and it's sort of in the future. Um, sort of like the prequels to the, you know, Star Wars prequels. All to right, the of course, of kind course. of thing. Um, but uh, Aaliyah is a bigger part of it. Um, yeah, but we'll it, see when we get to part three. Yeah, like I, presumably yeah. they're going to make it. This is made 81, 82 million in its opening weekend. It's like doing really yeah, well. We'll Great. get there, Mike. Yeah, so we're getting yeah. there. But um, but well, I want to yeah. say too, like it might be confusing to some people who don't know the source material that. Lady Jessica is like talking to her unborn child yeah. and it's like, oh, she's talking to me. That. She's talking to your brother mm -hmm. and all that. this stuff. <laughs> yeah. Yep. Um, she's worried for you. I know. <laughs> Tell her this. Okay. Yep. <laughs> yeah. This so is good. great. And we open the film okay. with Paul talking to her, but she can't respond. And then once she drinks the, That's right. you know what I mean? So it's, 
constant theme is talking to his sister anyway. Right. So then we have, of course, some new additions to the cast. Uh, another standout that I wanted to mention, of course, we have Stellan Skarsgård as Baron Harkonnen. He was in the mm-hmm. last movie. Um, he kind of defined, like, the way they define the look of the Harkonnens is very interesting, where they're all these, like, weird, bald people. Right. Um, and if you remember the Harkonnens in the Lynch version, absolutely insane. Oh, man. Uh, <laughs> actually yeah. ridden redheads. Yeah. <laughs> yeah was yep. the motif plus thing. so yeah villeneuve said instead of redheads they're all going to be weird baldies yeah. um and we have of course uh dave batista as glassu robin mm-hmm. uh, another of his, his nephews but we have the new character and this was i was very interested interested to see how it would be portrayed but we have fade ratha harkonnen mm-hmm. played by staying in the in the lynch version uh, this is the nephew of Baron Harkonnen, another potential prospect to be the Kwisatz Haderach because mm-hmm. Bene Gesser behind everything, pulling all the strings behind things, right? Yep. Um, and we have here Austin Butler, right? Right. Uh, and he was played by Sting guys... in one version and Elvis in this yes, version. That's right, of course. Right. This is why I was, <laughs> yes, there was a tradition <laughs> of him being a rock star. And actually in the Jodorowsky version that yep. never got made, uh, and this kind of ties into the Blade Runner thing that I was just saying. He All wanted right. David Bowie uh, to play that role in the in the Jodorowsky version. So we had David Bowie, Sting, and then a guy who played Elvis in a movie. You ain't nothing uh, but a horror, Conan. <laughs> nice, and, dude. I like that. My blue suede <laughs> eyes. It, so here's famously, the yes. He, oh, please he, go right ahead. I was just gonna say he famously played Elvis in a movie and then could not stop talking <laughs> like Elvis in real oh, life. Oh man. Yeah. And had to hire a vocal yes. coach to untrain him in talking like Elvis. Um, Help me, mom. What do I do? <laughs> mm-hmm. But that being said, I thought he was Are great in this lonely? movie. His yeah. impression of Stellan Skarsgård's Baron wow. Harkonnen, his voice, like I didn't get any Elvis in his voice. I just got Baron Harkonnen. And, and I thought he was Stellan great. Stellan Skarsgård. So yeah. I, I'm pretty sure when we did our first episode, just around the year that it was coming out in, in 2021, when we covered that, I think was Batman, the Batman coming out at a similar time, because mm. I think in that episode, we, we pause it to you, Jacob, what's your dream casting? And I, I believe right. you say Robert Pattinson. Robert Pattinson. That's right. Uh, mm-hmm. Which totally makes sense to me. I think when this Austin Butler casting came out, we were all kind of bummed, right? Thinking like, what a cool ro- role to go to kind of a not cool person. Yeah, actually, you're completely right, Colin, because I, yeah, I thought Robert Pattinson, I thought he had the range to do it. He's he's done some movies like Good Time. He's crazy. He's completely yeah. transforms yeah. himself, mm-hmm. kind of. Um, and I thought, yeah, he can pull off this crazy role. Uh, and Austin Butler was the one casting that I was like very apprehensive about. And I was right. like, I don't know, this fucking Elvis guy. Like it's your girl, Florence. It's your grandpa, Christoph. Like I yeah, remember you I loved being all the like, new additions. Like, this is great. And then mm-hmm. Austin Butler being like, ah, oh, and they dropped the ball. You could have got Alexander out here. He's a Norseman. He, you know, that's what you would think they would <laughs> oh, do. Yeah. yeah, that would have been. shave his head, yeah. you know. Yeah, Bill just, Skarsgård. Get, get one yeah. of the other Skarsgård. Yeah, get the Skarsgård. Well, have you seen yeah. Bill Skarsgård looks like in this Crow remake. Yes, that they're doing. he yeah. looks like Fade Roth. Unfortunately, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> could have done it to shave him. Uh, but yeah, I was really impressed with Austin yeah. Butler for sure. Like, I'm excited yeah. when Mike gets to Chappie, he'll he'll see <laughs> this Bill Skarsgård performance again. When Ninja or whatever, one of those guys, mm-hmm. uh, right. What was that band? Oh, yeah. What was that band called? Die Antwoord. Yeah. Yeah. Die Antwoord. Die Antwoord. <laughs> yep. South African rap duo, mm-hmm. uh, who have been extremely mega canceled if you know anything about them. oh no, mega canceled <laughs> yeah do, n- do no, not look Tappy into that <laughs> they sent the atomics no nope. yeah, pretty much right that. after that movie came out i think a no. lot of stuff came out about them like no. sex well, trafficking and like all kinds of crazy shit so they seem so likable <laughs> oh. yeah oh, uh, all right they were well, always weirdos but yeah um, but anyway austin um Butler. yeah here's austin great. Butler. I'm so glad it didn't go to Robert Pattinson, who we are already in the bag for. And instead, it went to this guy who I saw Elvis. I liked Elvis fine. I've seen this guy in a couple other things. I'll say this. 
I watch I watch my uncle's books. I watch those Terry Brooks Chronicles of Shannara. I've seen this kid in that fucking bad oh, wow. MTV. I saw show. that too so, on MTV. Oh, nice. You know yeah, I love terrible. bad fantasy. I the whole first season, it's awful. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and this guy, you know, he has a very distinctive look. Uh, I don't know how to describe it, but he just has a very distinctive look to him. Hell yeah, I was like, I don't know. Yeah. Um, well, now you know. Talk about uh, Euphoria. Compare him as Elvis to this new uh, Priscilla, oh, right. Jacob Sophia Lordy. Coppola, yeah. where Jacob yeah, yeah, yeah. Lordy plays Elvis. Um, Salt and some people boy. say that he was better than mm. Austin Butler as Elvis. So I don't know. But um, yeah, he got so in his I, Elvis role. He just talked like Elvis in his personal life. Couldn't stop. He was, you know, he went so method with it. Now I only talk like Finn <laughs> Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Oh no. And when I saw his look, I was like, I don't know. They're doing the bald thing with all the Harkonnens. I'm not buying it. But then when I saw the trailers and I saw, you know, him in the arena, knife fighting and stuff, I was like, okay, okay, I can see it. I can see it. Yeah. Um, and I was impressed with him in this movie. I thought he was one of the other standouts aside from Javier Bardem. The uh, goddamn voice. It is so impressive. Yeah. And just, yeah, he brings a menace. Like you buy that this guy is dangerous like he's an effective foil to or at least threat to paul's ascension you believe that and the arena stuff like just to talk about visuals again like they filmed that stuff in infrared and like yeah desaturated oh, it because of the black sun like that's some ink fireworks that's some of the that's coolest incredible. sci-fi shit i've ever seen sure. absolutely yeah if people don't know the the harkonnen homeworld giddy prime uh, has like a black sun, so everything looks black and white when you go outside, mm-hmm. and that's why it's filmed that way. Some people didn't understand that, and they're just like, "Why is this filmed in black and white?" Because that's what it looks like on the planet, uh, the Harkonnens' planet, when they're outside. So, super cool, super cool stuff. Super cool. Yeah. And like it was legit infrared cameras, and then they had to transfer that, and that's why it has this kind of glow, this bloom to it. Like it's not just yeah. desaturating it; it was this whole new process they came up with, which is like. Yeah, spicy meatball. So anyway, I just want to shout that out. His spooky concubines. They were probably some of the scarier. What do you want? Liver? Yeah, <laughs> that was yeah. scary. Right, so all the Harkonnen and stuff is so weird. And yeah, their hobbies are. In part one, it. in one scene with Baron Harkonnen, he just has like this human spider thing that, that just never I comes up that. again. Get it out of the room. I don't want yeah. to. Hear it. it doesn't speak because... English. So, right, <laughs> but they, they bring it, it, it Here's it. Yep. She uses the voice on it. Um, oh, man. The the Harkonnen who is in the oscillating helicopter with Batista in this movie who throws up. Why does he throw up? Uh, I don't remember. So my thinking is watching Batista in this, not to get too off us, but it's like all the Harkonnens, it feels like to me, they're just existing through like fear of death Pressure. right so because so they much, know that yeah. batista okay. fucked up and he's trying so hard to find him that guy's like we're gonna fucking die i wish okay. i wasn't here right now yeah 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 or the it's a lot Shul like the... hadabs or whatever the the worms are called or maybe just shy scary, i guess the shy Haluds. Yeah, yeah something like that but batista definitely feels like, like he's acting out of yeah. fear not power yeah, now. It does. And that's, I it's... love that arc for Batista in this. I mm-hmm. think that was really cool to see a guy that big be fucking terrified of Austin Butler. <laughs> big man yeah. becomes small. And, and I love that. Of, uh, yeah. He's <laughs> competing with his cousin, Austin Butler. Um, but it's like the empire in star Wars where the subordinates are scared of their leaders. And then the leaders are scared of their leaders and everyone's scared yeah, of Darth Vader because if you mess up, he might just fucking force choke you to death. And at one point, Batista does just like kill one of his underlings, right? Because he's just mad at him. A and, couple of them. Very yeah. Kylo. <laughs> right. Um, yeah. So the Harkonnens. I what wasn't, a movie. Yeah. <laughs> it's incredible, what man. What a movie. What a movie. It, it, it really is. You have Leah Sadu in there Eddie as well, uh, yes. who's barely even in it. But but I, I love her as an actress, too. And I'm like, oh, that's, that's Leah Sadu. Oh, yes, yes, yes. Lady I was so, so, so yeah. you hinted before. The Bene Gesserit are doing this eugenic stuff. They have all their cards spread out. It's not necessarily they're betting on House Atreides. We'll send Leah Sidhu down there as well. When, you know, she's like, yes, and I've already secured some of his genetics. Like, this is great. I'm digging all yeah. of this. They right. And they send her to go have sex with him to get her pregnant with the possible Kwisatz Haderach, too. So they're stick your hand in this box. <laughs> You know, yeah, the Gom Jabbar. Uh, so he likes because you 
<laughs> Sorry, just because Jacob said her name earlier, just and we're talking about the Ben yeah. Desert. Charlotte Ramplin, my yeah. last maybe MVP for performances, who's barely mm-hmm. in this movie, but yeah. her reaction to getting the voice used on her by Timothy Charlotte in the movie, when she, an old woman, just has to go like, oh, and just like fall over. Yeah. She, it's incredibly good. I was like, that's great. I loved it. Yeah, I and I thought it. she was great in part one. The, the yes. original Gamja Bar scene with Timmy mm-hmm. Chalamet is a great scene. That's what the box is called, the Gamja Bar? Yes. Oh, yep. your hand I love the all this bar. Stuff, guys. I, I love all of this stuff. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. And it's to test your your will, right? Because if you pull your hand out of the box, here's the mind killer. Dog. She'll kill you. Right? Yep, that's right. You're an animal. Um, <laughs> animal can't have that kind of power. Desert power. Right, right, right. <laughs> you haven't finished uh, your supper. I love it so much. Um, so yeah, we have Austin Butler. We have uh, Javier Bardem, Zendaya. Batista returning. We get um, you, Josh Brolin returning that? somehow. Or, Josh Brolin, Gunner. Right? Briefly, uh, just, you know, Gunner, is that his name? Gurney, Gurney returning, yes. Played, of course, by Sir Patrick Stewart in mm-hmm. the James Lynch version, pre-TNG, so he was kind of doing uh, some pre John oh, luc guitar hello. acting. Uh, How are you? Mm-hmm. Which he might be one of the, the castings that I prefer the Lynch version better. Ah, okay. Um, not that huh. I dislike Josh Brolin. I think he's good in this role, but I just love patrick stewart and uh he's you know he's going into battle holding that pug which are the should have kept the pug. of uh house of treaties in the lynch version yeah i really hate that mm-hmm. and of course he would get his instrument in this his whatever you call it his hack bar what, what is it called um i don't know, I don't know but, like that. yeah the basically gurney halleck in the book is described as a warrior uh um I'm trying to think like He's like a bard, right? He's a warrior bard. A so warrior he, poet, like warrior poet. Yeah. yeah. So he, sure. he plays his little stringed instrument. He his bassinet or whatever the fuck. Um, yeah. But he's also like this crazy warrior. I thought the Patrick Stewart version kind of highlighted that more than part one, but then part two, we do get him playing that. And I like that a lot. I found yeah. his ending to be so satisfying when he gets the final kill and gets to say for my Lord or my master, or my Duke or, you know, whatever he says. Yeah. So like, yeah. Yes. And, and if I could underline, he, yeah. well, I want my Batista thing for that kill. Sorry. Uh, he's using a whip like he's using a weapon that you don't fight people with you you lord over people like he's he's right. not able to one-on-one fight like i think it's yes, a thematic thing great. that he has a whip you know he's unable at this point yeah yeah he's broken and uh um what was i gonna say <laughs> well ruined, should we I'm talk so about angry. how about the last new entry let's talk about the sort of the royal family of it all so you oh, yeah. set up the in part one what you learn in the background is you you learn this from the Charlotte Rampling character, even, right? She's explaining to the other like Bene Gesserits at one point, like the emperor is doing this because this family is getting a little too big for their britches. We want to mm-hmm. knock them down with this other family that keeps everybody cool and keeps the emperor in power. So then mm-hmm. we're introduced in this to the princess and the emperor. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Well, and the Bene Gesserit are even they don't necessarily care about the emperor staying in power they're just using him for their own ends as well right. because they're just all about bringing about the Kwisatz Haderach and if the emperor is someone else that's okay too like they have all these contingency plans mm-hmm. and in the way that you said they have installed a single member of every one of these force wielding the the weird world weird word wielding mm-hmm. uh, Bene Gesserit's into these royal families Charlotte Rampling as sort of the head witch or queen of these witches, right, or matriarch or wherever she is, is the aide or like nanny to the princess. She's like the confidant or truth teller, they say, for the emperor. So she's installed herself at the highest rank as well. Jacob. Kind of so like scar giver. Yeah. Cool. Yeah, yeah, that's true. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And she's um she's sort of training Princess Irulan in the in the same way that Lady Jessica mm-hmm. was training Paul. Um, in the ways of the Bene Gesserit. Um, but just but, in diplomacy, or can she use the special abilities? Uh, no, I don't think she can't use the voice, but okay. uh, yeah. But Princess Irulan is an interesting character because in the book, she doesn't really appear in person until like the very end. But if you look at the book, like each chapter has like these little blurbs at the beginning of the chapter that are like written by princess Irulan in the world, like her diary type thing, like they show in this movie. Right. So, so she is kind of a cons- historian. 
yeah considered the narrator of this story yeah hmm. and again if you remember in the lynch version uh she was played by virginia madison we just saw her in candy uh, candy <laughs> mm -hmm. love her. herself <laughs> yeah that. um but yeah she's not she's not a huge part of this first book as a character and they actually expanded her role in this movie even more than in the book so like some of these scenes where she's talking to the emperor uh were added just for this movie um do you want to play space chess <laughs> the quizats had a rat <laughs> there's an armada troubled <laughs> yeah let's let's talk about this here let's take a the emperor himself yeah go ahead set this up i don't like this casting yeah christopher walken um cw I didn't like who I no. said on multiple episodes, I was positive would be dead before this movie came out. So mm. I'm very happy that that did not come true. Yeah. No, he's still he's still there. felt like it would happen. We got one more movie uh, to go now. Yeah. Um, but he's less important after you know his his main job is to just surrender that. to Paul Atreides. It's the right. But um, yeah, and Colin, you pointed out the the references to Dune in media video that you sent. And the famous Fatboy Slim music video that he appears in, mm -hmm. uh, Weapon of Choice, Weapon of uh, Choice. Mm -hmm. where he, which is, uh, you know, a classic where he's just dancing, doing all this great stuff. But they have that reference to Dune where they say, like, uh, walk without rhythm or you'll they attract the worm. They take the sample <laughs> of Kyle Chandler saying, walk without rhythm or you will awaken the worm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Incredible. And then, yeah, walk and then to appear walk, many walk years later. Rhythm. In Dune, I mean, amazing. He's walking without <laughs> rhythm, you know? Yeah. That's right. He's walking. Yeah. He speaks without rhythm, too. Yeah, that was uh, Spike yeah. Jones music video. Huh. Did not yes, know that. I did know that because there's, they have these Criterion Collection uh, uh, DVDs where it's the collected works of different music video directors. And they had yeah. one for Michelle Gondry. Mm -hmm. Um that my friend used to own it or owned and I would watch them. And they had one for Spike Jones where it's all the different music videos that he directed. And I remember this Gotta one, the fat boy slim on there. Yeah. yeah. At one point there's like zero gravity. He's like walking on the ceiling and stuff and flying around. It's a great music video. <laughs> well, so what do we think of him in this? I said, I wasn't too much of a fan. It feels weird. It feels like stunt casting. It's like, I don't, he feels like the only person who I see as a celebrity and not a character, if that makes sense when I'm watching this. I would argue this isn't even just a movie role. I mean, it's it's really, it's, it's just, it is so Florence Pugh can say into a tape recorder, my father looks troubled. It's it's an old mm -hmm. man who just sort of like puts his hand behind his back and like sort of like walks around. He's kind of doing a Donald Trump is kind of what I took from him. Uh, it's like, oh, the way he's posturing. Like, I don't know. Yeah. I don't know. The emperor is kind of just like he's losing control of his his power, and obviously the Bene Gesserit are kind of pulling strings behind him, and that's why he they kind of convince him into this plot to, you know, eradicate the Atreides line because he feels threatened by Duke Leto because he's so popular with the other great houses. He's like, well, he could usurp me and stuff, but by doing so he creates essentially this charismatic figure of Paul Atreides who does end up uh, mm -hmm. usurping him. So it's kind of ironic that he brought upon his, brought about his own uh, demise yeah. essentially. And there is one good moment with him. I like too, when uh, Baron Harkonnen and him are interacting and he like, he's the one who cut the hose of his little mechanism effectively. So yeah. it's like, it yeah. goes to show the hierarchy like of everyone can be crushed the power to destroy a thing is the power to control it and it just goes to show like the way the harkonnens are scared of each other it's like whoever can destroy me right. controls me and they're so scared of that uh whoever controls the spice controls the world <laughs> right because you think you know baron harkonnen is this big bad who doesn't answer to anyone but then you see him bowing down to the emperor later and right like, oh shit he does answer to someone mm -hmm. um and if you I remember in part recall, one, yeah, go ahead. Well, I was going to say, I can't recall who plays the emperor in the Lynch film. It's, it's some bald guy. It might be Tom Shadyak. I can't remember who plays him. Hmm. Oh, now, yeah. I... But that film has that very cool opening where it's the emperor and it's the space guild of, what are they, the navigators or the engineers? The spacing Jacob, guild? Or the spacing guild, who are the, the people who guild. use the spice. The, now, the guild navigators, yeah. All that was, did we see any of those people in either of these two films or is all of that briefly, been cut out as well? I, I believe briefly in the beginning of part one, you see when um, 
the messenger from the emperor goes to Kaladin to uh, bring the message to. Can we see what the, the navigators priest. look like? Um, no, you don't see. Okay. Yeah, that. I've never seen them. You see them. the Lynch version. Remember those? those the like fish weird heads. mutated I mean, aliens. So yeah, yeah. Crazy. That's. I would love to see what Denny Villeneuve conceptually sees them as. For the human well, let me remind beans. you, Colin. In yeah. uh, the Lynch version, the Emperor is played by Jose Ferrer, who oh Miguel uh, Ferrer's father. Miguel Ferrer's father. Yes. Um. Yeah. So there you go. Nice. But yes. Uh. What was it? What were we talking about? I did want to say with with uh, Josh Brolin too, Gurney mm-hmm. Halleck. Um, mm-hmm. I liked that he he obviously doesn't believe the Fremen prophecy and all that stuff, but he just wants revenge on the Harkonnens, and he's like, "Look, you're my duke now, Paul Atreides. Use that, you know, use their their fanaticism to wage war against the Harkonnens and the Emperor and everyone that's wronged us." All I care about, yeah, right, and wipe these people out. And it does kind of, you know, you see it when he shows up, like he's sitting off alone, like he has access to um, Paul, right? And you see like Chani being concerned about that, like, oh, he's going to, he's kind of poisoning the water too, of like, he's kind of edging yeah. him on to like, hey, you can get revenge. Yeah. And yeah. the complexities, again, that this fucking incredible screenplay and film have of mm-hmm. when Jacob's saying this stuff about it, like how he does not believe in the fanaticism, but has to put on appearances because he's using it as this tool. Little moments, like when he is pulling Chani down when everyone else bows, because you can yeah. feel in him that he's like, oh, if somebody else is doing like this religious thing, I'll do it too. So these people kind of like accept me or whatever. Yeah, like yeah. Playing these like little moments that everyone is playing. I just, I can't right. get over these performances. Mm-hmm. And of course he was thought to be dead in part one after the big battle where yeah. all the Atreides army was kind of slaughtered by the Harkonnens and the Sardukar, which are the emperor's royal uh, guard essentially. Um, but he, as we learn, he's now become a smuggler on planet Arrakis who is kind of doing his own thing and is, is still alive and is trying to get, get, you know, fight the Harkonnens his own way. And then we, that scene where he meets up again with Paul is a great scene where it's, it's callback where he's like, I recognize your footsteps, old man. Right. Yep. Yep. So love that stuff. Um, mm-hmm. Yeah, uh, my so dude, much, so my dude when he me. sees the ring and that he has it at the end, he is so happy. The whole thing where he's like, Hey, stick your little fingertips inside this thing. We'll get these nukes. I mean, it's like, it's, it's such a weird fucking yeah. movie. I fucking love every moment of it. I just want to know was, who brought the nukes and at what point, you know, we know the <laughs> Leto and them went believe, later. Yeah. There was an advanced party going to Iraq, yeah. but somebody installed That's that. That's the Atreides but house also, uh, collection of nukes the, that they the, hit on the, the house episode. arsenal. Well, you have to understand, Paul Atreides says this at one point. He says, all the royal houses have their own stockpile of nuclear warheads. Mm-hmm. You're like, okay. Yeah. What are you talking about? We yeah. all individually have 21 missiles. So what I'm thinking is when the Emperor's here, I'll fire off like four of these fucking things. You're like, yeah, that's a great idea, dude. Shit, fucking fire one of them. I'm sure you do a shit ton of We'll damn. threaten the spice use fields. We'll destroy them. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah threaten and destroy the all the spice fields, which everyone wants because that's literally how they how they can travel faster than light in this universe yeah. is they use the spice to bend space, essentially. Um, and that's what the guild navigators do. Right. Um, but I just like, you know, he was so happy to see Gurney Halleck because that was his buddy. Like he had his buddies in the last movie, Duncan Idaho, who died defending him. Uh, I was a had... little surprised just the yeah. level of uh, casting. Jacob, sorry to interrupt you, but the, that we did not see a flashback to either Duncan Idaho or Leto, uh, Oscar Isaac. So I, I really just assume both of them we might see... be in this movie. That's true. Yeah, we see Duke Leto's picture, right, a couple times, but we never see uh him act obviously or in person and with duncan idaho i'll just say he may be a part of dune messiah in a certain way without i don't want to spoil anything but so lisa momoa may be back in some shape or form i'll just say that gotcha Um, he's a worm (laughs) yeah right we we got james back in flashbacks too like you know so there was yeah some of that going on but yeah he had his buddies in the last movie Duncan Idaho, Gurney Halleck, Thufir Hawat, who is also not in this movie, which is the house mentat of mm-hmm. the house computer. Of right. Yes. I read that he filmed something, but they cut it because he does get a special thanks at the end of this film. 
which is very yeah. interesting. Yeah, Stephen McKinley Henderson, I think is his name. Uh, and From Lady yeah, Bird, was, that guy's great. That's mm. right. And I was sad that he wasn't in this movie. Um, and the Mentats are an interesting thing too, because uh, if you don't know about the Dune universe, uh, prior to the story of Dune, you know, like a hundred years before or so, there was a big war against the thinking machines, right? The AI, because thinking machines became so powerful that the free humans were like, we need to do the Balurian Jihad and destroy mm -hmm. all of AI. It's basically the plot of Terminator, right? Uh, we need to destroy the thinking machines because they're going to overpower us. And, you know, with the way AI is going in real life, I think we need our own Butlerian Jihad pretty soon here. Okay. Because uh, <laughs> this AI is, it, is getting too powerful. It is the fears of a man who is on probably a lethal amount of uh, mushrooms and psilocybin named Frank Herbert, who is yes. like, fucking AI is scary. So the universe <laughs> I cooked up, they killed all the AI. Well, how would they pilot spaceships still? Okay, so these guys yeah. nort this stuff called spice. And their brains get so time. big, they can <laughs> yeah. pilot the spaceship. So you're like, well, what the fuck does that mean? He's like, it's a whole thing. It leads to like a whole civil war. You don't yep. know. <laughs> yeah. But that's why in this future world, they don't have computers and stuff. They don't have anything more powerful than basic machines. And that's the role of the Mentats. Is it's called a calculator. <laughs> yeah. Right. But the Mentats are basically human computers that can recall all these facts and figures and stuff. That's what Thufir Huat does. Um, yeah. So I just want to explain all that. Yeah. But I have a, this is where I have a little bit of issue with some of the depictions of technology in the, this movie. The, the Harkonnens are definitely using computers. They have hologram you know, screens that are tracking radar. That. Like that stuff. I can buy the or, I mean, or, or ornithopter. It makes you fly. They all have like <laughs> robot suits. Right. Those aren't, yeah. those don't have computers necessarily. That could be I, weird I magic. That the, the Harkonnen computers, when they cut to them, uh, I didn't think about until that till now. That is a, inconsistency with at least what the book says right um, but that's yeah, a minor yeah. thing but in ornithopter i can buy because we've had mechanical helicopters and shit in world war ii and yeah. vietnam like that's fine but yeah. when i see hologram displays say. tracking the location of their dead troops it's like you've got a computer yeah <laughs> but maybe the harkonnens because their baddies were like Fuck right the right we're gonna make our own computer. or it's like it's hooked up to their mentats or something and yeah like it has limited function it can only just it's not yeah. an ai it's like a loophole yeah. but anyway that's just a minor thing um yeah which those floating um, suits are cool it's just yeah, it's just, that was a sick effects, shot but i really like it that it's yeah. just like we're just kind of weightless no we propulsion we're just kind of weightless yeah well, yep, that's yep. why i love like the aesthetics the production design of this movie everything like it's all so well designed like the ornithopters the way they harvest the spice with like the giant machines and stuff that even we saw in part one when they had when mm -hmm. they go on the tour kind of and they have that yep. incident where they have to save people like i just yep. love how everything's depicted like it's so good it's so good yeah, and we've been broad strokes, but while we're pointing out stuff like that, like that machine, my favorite sequence in the entire film is when uh, Chani and Paul are taking out that ornithopter with the mining machine, and they're hiding behind the leg, and they've got that little RPG that they're loading together. Yes. Um, that was so sick. And, like, uh -huh. it, you know, it, it, the shield goes down when it fires, and he looks over at Chani, and she's already lowering it because it's too late. Like, I love that whole sequence. And they're working together. Like, that was so well done in the sense of scale. Like, wow, wow, wow. They're wow. becoming freedom fighters. Like, that is such a cool moment mm -hmm. in the film. And he yeah. has to load it for her. It's like it's a real team effort, right? It's great. And I will say, yeah, the action all feels like a step up from part one. Like, all the fighting mm -hmm. scenes are just really well done like the the ending battle is very impressive if a little bit here's what i thought i thought the first like two-thirds of the movie uh were very like they took their time kind of establishing paul's relationship with the fremen and him them sort of accepting him yeah. as one of their own like it yeah. really it really works for me the way they they let you they don't rush through it i thought the third act once they get to okay we're gonna fight the emperor and all this stuff it feels a little bit condensed, like it could have been even longer, I think. And they sort of mm -hmm. had to rush the third act a little bit for me. I don't know if you guys felt that or, or not. I did feel like it was a little bit quick from Paul to go from resisting to like, all right, fuck it, it's genocide time. Like, like yeah. it did feel well, a little quick. Well, but... basically, he drinks the water of it's... life and that opens his mind, right? Right. Well, but it's, it's literally 70% 
of a film of a guy going, I will not go south. I will not go south. I will not go south to when the film has to end. He's like, let's go south. Let's wrap up this. Let's wrap up this other yeah. stuff. And it does. Yeah. I mean, it snowballs very quickly, Jacob. Mm-hmm. So but I, again, to yeah. compare to the Lynch version where like this entire movie was like the last 45 minutes of the yeah, Lynch t- version. 10 minutes. <laughs> I mean, it's like, truly, it's yeah. like I, he rides the worm and he's like, I'm the Shul Hadid. Like, it's just like, <laughs> Like Paul Atreides yeah. in that film, it's Comic Lachlan walking around going like, "Hey, did you hear the news? I'm in charge of this planet." <laughs> like he's yeah, just like yeah. He's the boss. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. But you so. know, it's it's still good. It's still good. It just feels a little quick because I was thinking too, like, wow, this whole movie is just he goes to drink the water of life and at the Alamo, they bring out the, the check when the movie's near over, and they were like just doing the water of life. I'm like, is this just gonna end with him like? Yeah, like like really flat or something. Yeah, I was like, no way. And then we did get a battle at the end, but I was like, what if that would have been the ending? I was like, this is so dumb. They just spent a whole movie to drink a water like that. That's the only plot beat that we got. So I'm glad the third act, even if it was rushed, like existed the way it did. Uh, Right. Well, he drinks the water of life. His mind is opened. He becomes the Kwisatz Haderach. He steps into the prophecy. There's a battle where they overpower pretty easily the the forces of the harkonnens and the emperor um mm-hmm. they storm into the palace right um or the the spaceship that he's on i guess the empire the emperor's mm-hmm. spaceship and it does kind oh, of i end guess on so a yeah. yeah yeah right because the emperor is hovering over arrakis because he he wants to oversee the the spice production for himself i think that's why right why he's there right yeah they well, do they some kind of job that lures him there yeah um, yeah one of their freedom missions but then it does kind of end uh... him saying out loud basically like how did they react to my phone call and somebody says not good and he's like fuck them (laughs) they're like Mm -hmm. fuck them and everybody hears it's jihad time and you're like oh shit um and it ends sort of with a cliffhanger but that is kind of how the book ends where it's like okay he's now in power uh time to unleash a a jihad Yes, uh, right. against the world. And that's what Dune Messiah kind of picks up with, where he is now the emperor, and it's hey, about that. How about the Lady Jessica, I am your grandfather stuff? Is is that in the oh book? Oh my gosh, yeah. Yes. So obviously the reveal is that Lady Forgot Jessica that. is the daughter of Baron Harkonnen, um, which I she was, didn't even I know. I was shocked. You were shocked? Yeah. Mother, yeah. Why well, didn't you tell me? I didn't know till I took the waters myself. Which is I, she I, lying? Yeah. Now we're both autistic weirdos. <laughs> right. And again, that all goes back to the Bene Gesserit doing eugenics, basically, where they're like, yeah. okay, we'll take this Harkonnen, mix them with an Atreides, and we'll get a half Harkonnen and half Atreides. We're mixing these great house bloodlines to try to uh, create the Kwisatz Haderach. So that was their plan. Right. Um, and that is in the book. Yeah. Well, my question is, how much, like, is she lying? Like, the more I watch this and going back to the first one, I'm like, is like you're trying to figure out who's behind it and it feels like jessica is behind it to me like if she was lying about not knowing she was a harkonnen she's really pushing paul this she wants show, to I go mean, south the, like she's yeah, she's and doing the transformation it. rebecca ferguson does mike by the end of the show i'm like she is the villain of this universe. <laughs> yeah she seems yeah the machinations she pulled are so mighty even yes. when she's showing concern for paul's life it almost you can read it as like just because that's going to fuck up her plan you know what good, I mean? I could use this. You imagine her saying that yeah. after everything. Good, good. Yes. Okay. Good, good. Yes. Right. Yes. So it's no, fascinating. Totally. Yeah, she is Lady Macbeth, um, and yeah, they're trying to yeah they're trying to bring about the Kwisatz Haderach, which is she believes is yeah. her son, <laughs> and she's going against the Jenna Besserit. She's rebelling. She's rebelling so hard. You know, no, yeah, she's like, like oh, fuck this. I will be in charge. My, My family, over two religions. <laughs> mm-hmm. Oh my Seriously. God. Uh, hey, so Mike said his favorite part with um, yeah. the rocket launcher sequence. Let me just shout out mine mm-hmm. real quick because I, I want Jacob's opinion on how the fuck did it look in IMAX. I liked the sandworm writing. I went, oh. and in particular, after the first one, I don't even need the stuff where that the priestess is saying, like, did you hear it was a grandfather worm? You know, they're just oh, like yeah. building the fucking legend of this guy. But the one later where they're all going to battle. And you see them like a fucking cell of freedom fighters. I know I keep saying this, but on the fucking worm going into battle, it is so fucking cool. Mm -hmm. Loved it. I loved all the worm stuff in this movie. The little baby worms when they 
had to catch them to get the water of life and everything. When they but use the so much water to drown it yes, too, just yeah, thematically. Do. You don't waste water, but, but this we'll do is, it to kill this the if you, if a man was drowning, he or if a man was dying of dehydration, he would never take these waters. These are mm -hmm. sacred waters. How about when they, so good. with dead bodies, they like suck all the water out of the dead bodies to, to you, save all the water. water. It's not worth it's much, but it's chemicals. Good. But <laughs> it's gross. Yeah. Good for the cooling gross system. They water, said, water, yeah, yeah. 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 Uh, but they add all the dead's water to that giant pool, which is a nice touch. Like it's that's so why cool. we don't. You know, yeah. Sacred. Return your water to the well. When it is life. filled, we will have our jihad. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Even well, you can't even throw up there. or cry because you're wasting your don't. body's water. Don't do it. <laughs> mm -hmm. Don't do it. Love it. Love it. I Just the opening that. when they spit on the ground in the first movie. Like, what a nice yeah. touch when they're like, "Oh, that's a, that's not an insult." Like. I love it. Yeah, when he spits the on the highest ground. level yeah. of respect, Jason. Thank you for the gift of your body's water. Yeah. <laughs> of your moisture, Still yeah. Um, and all the stuff with the worm. Like, I thought the worms mm -hmm. were set up so well in part God. one where, you know, the first time you see them, it's like eating that whole uh, mining Machine. rig. Well, uh, you know what Oscar Isaac calls it? He calls it desert power. That's desert right. Power. That like desert power. We have sea yeah. power. We have land power. Now we need desert now power. Now we need desert mm -hmm. power. <laughs> Jeez, oh, man. Um... But yeah, all the worms is great. I love the thumpers to attract them and everything. Yeah. It's so good. It's so good. Yeah, no, it's it's um I want to 3D print that and have some type of mechanism. Like I want that device. Very, very cool stuff. Did you see the spell suit by the end of this? Yeah. <laughs> Eventually. Right. Did you see the video of someone riding around on a mechanical worm in a theater? What? Did you see that? Yes. <laughs> no. You gotta look that up. Someone dressed as a Fremen and riding a I don't know what it is. It's like a, a hoverboard or something with a worm. Like they put like a like a tube that your dog runs through that was like painted like a worm, and it's a hoverboard. It's very strange, but yeah, yeah, you gotta check that out. It's pretty funny. Yeah. I love it. Um, yeah, I've been you know I've been looking at all the Dune memes and everything because everyone online is talking about Dune, making Dune memes. Um, you know, it's great. I love it. Yeah, absolutely. It's it's like. Again, we're mostly talking about theme and stuff, not plot. It's like he spent, like yeah. Colin said, he does spend the whole movie like ingratiating himself with the Fremen, very dances with wolves, and then I don't want to go south. Now I'm going to go south, and then okay, let's revenge. Um, but it does yeah, play it really out a lot more nuance the, uh... than that, you know, because Jessica goes south yeah. first and is spreading the yeah. the rumors, no. like trying to hype everybody up. Rumor. Meanwhile, mm -hmm. I'm That's gonna, I'm gonna earn my secret name. I'll I'll ingratiate the fact that I I can do these hits. I'll, I'll keep I'm winning these over tactics. the non-believers. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. and it is a lot. It is it does start out as sort of the white savior narrative, but it sort of flips it on its head by the end, where you're like, oh, he's not a savior. He's a, you know, he's. A dictator maybe no and that's why chani i guess this is yeah great way to bring the momentum back um that's why chani's such an important character in this because like she's the one that if the audience is stupid just look at her and she'll tell you whether he's the hero or not because he's right he promised he would uphold her he even said oh one of you guys should be the leader and when he breaks that and takes over it's like dude you you fucked us dude you said you wouldn't do that so to see her disappointment even though she cares about him like that says everything you need to know and i love the scenes between them yeah. Um, she's like, you, know, you come from dukes and great houses. Here we're all equals. And he's like, I would very much like to be your equal. Love all that stuff. <laughs> you that might be really able to be a Fremen, me. Paul, if I show he you the said, way. I think I know what he said. <laughs> uh huh. Put your hand in the and box. I, think I can see how, like, how he is winning people over because he is sort of charismatic and people believe in him. And I'm like, I'm starting to believe in him. Like, I'm about to yeah. fucking become a you know fundamentalist here <laughs> he's getting results he's too like yeah he's yeah. winning raids like they're successful in destroying a lot of this mining equipment yeah, yeah, yeah. it's a, it's, it's interesting slowly they're just they're just like this the, quirked up white boy he's not so bad the yeah, most impressive good thing about this movie other than i swear to god it making the david lynch version bearable is that you leave this film wanting to be a fremen that you you yeah. believe in their cause that you it does that again the mirrors to what's going on in the real world right now you truly feel so empowered to go like yes all foreign invaders should be fucking pushed out we need to reclaim our lands i should go fucking volunteer like you feel so fired up and it's about people that again they are correct in their ideology 
but what they end this film saying and what you know they're about to do is so wrong and so set up for disastrous results that it's so bittersweet. It's just, it's such mm-hmm. a complex story to tell. I can't imagine being young and watching this. And yeah. I love Jacob that you said the November Lord of the Rings thing, because mm. in my opinion, Lord of the Rings is one of those things where it's like, you don't hear kids now. Like, obviously you can buy the short term game of uh, gain of, of having people be like, I like Iron Man. I like Batman. And, and kids will go that way. But you mm-hmm. mature a little, and then you like things like Lord of the Rings, and I right. think those companies get nervous and they go like, "Well, why don't we have a show that is like Lord of the Rings babies that we can hook those kids young?" When it's like you don't need to Rings like the when Jacob says that like people are talking about Dune right now, like the cool exciting thing is it's like when there is one of these properties that can catch fire with adults, you know it's going to stick around forever. Like, I love Dune now. Mike loves yeah. Dune I love now. Dune like, right now. Awesome. I am a friend. They are yeah. already trying to capitalize on the franchise yeah. by making spinoffs. They've got this Bene Gesserit TV show that they're making, which already, I think, went through one showrunner and has yeah. switched to a different showrunner yeah. now because there's creative troubles on set. So... Who knows? I mean, if if Villeneuve's not involved or is an exec producer kind of in name only, I'm not certain about its quality. You know, it yeah. might be really bad. Or no, I trust whatever. I trust this universe under his guidance. If somebody yeah. takes that emperor out, I'm gonna, I'm not gonna be too psyched. <laughs> it's like the it's like the John Wick thing again. Like, oh, we don't need yeah. a oh, fucking yeah. spinoff Hot TV metal. show. We don't need yeah. the Ben and Gesserit no, 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 no. prequel. Like. Yeah, you're not no. triggering us. The mystery of them is what makes them intriguing anyway. Like just getting yeah. bits and pieces of what they're about because they are mysterious anyway. So that's going to yeah. be the Rings of Power for Dune, I guess. Um, yeah. But that, what's interesting too with the Lord of the Rings, they're both based on novels, right? They're based on literature and not like recent novels. Like this was in the 60s. No. You know, mm-hmm. yeah. Lord of the Rings was 40s or whatever, right? Yep. So they're established literature, not comic books, not to look down on comic books or anything, right. but... No, it's there's a lot it's it's a lot denser than your average they're um, very MCU. adult materials mm-hmm. about of course fantastic things that yes maybe seem like they're more for kids but at their root are about like drama and bringing down fascism like both those things it's like the yeah. ptsd yeah. of like the first world war and like a guy who's on so many drugs <laughs> it's like i hate how the world operates like right. that's great even it's if we strip of this of fanaticism even yeah. stripping it of yeah. religious tones, it's just like the danger of being manipulated by charismatic messaging or like, you know, any, any, any type Absolutely of manipulation not. from somebody in power or whatever, or buying into can, having uh, power and becoming corrupt. Yeah, you can look at Putin or whoever you want today yes. where it's like, yeah, you know, the wrong person gets in power, you know, bad things yeah. can happen for sure. And they might hey, convince you that they're... You cr- yeah. you can watch dune too right now like that i yeah. jazz me up so fucking much i know that sounds so glib or whatever but like honestly right. like that's the power of art is that i didn't know what this was about i saw it and i immediately said like yes that exists for a reason and that says something and that's important yes good yes also the, the thing fact is, yeah sorry go just that it's subtle like they, it's not yeah. saying it they're showing and you have to interpret and maybe watch it a couple yeah. times and feel it like in your bones. And like that, that gives you something to chew on. It's, yeah. it's not rebel moon. No, <laughs> well, no, it can never be as good. <laughs> what rebel can be hey, Jimmy. <laughs> the, so the other thing is I saw um, some people are sort of comparing it to avatar James Cameron's avatar. Sure. Oh, okay. Yeah. Similar movies, but also different, right? They have similar themes going on. Uh, but taking different approaches to it. Um, and both could be accused of being sort of a white savior type of movie to different degrees, oppressed native people fighting against uh, colonialism and that kind of thing. Mm-hmm. Um, what's interesting is um, obviously Jake Sully is not going on saying, let's fucking go to right. go on a holy war across the well, galaxy. We haven't seen avatar three yet. <laughs> my, no. my Jake, <laughs> I'm the Quizak hatter. <laughs> yep. <laughs> oh my yeah. God. Um, so different approaches kind of, but similar themes in both movies. I, I, I like a lot. So, um, well, you know, it's just, it's like Dune is just so much more about like the power of people coming together. Avatar is just so much more about like the beauty of nature and neither of those is better than one or the other. Like sometimes I'm in different moods to hear something else, but again, like the, 
the the weight of what this says now and speaks to me it's like there's no competition like dune is saying a, a, a much more mature message in my opinion yeah i'd say avatar is much less subtle and kind of um hitting you over the head with its message kind of thing yeah um but almost Neytiri is almost the the Paul Atreides character where she, you know, wants to fight the uh, the, the colonialist while while Jake Sully is just more about like, no, we need to look out for our family, right? We don't care about that. He's the um, Dominic Toretto. Do you guys think yeah, Dominic yeah. Toretto is a Harkonnen? <laughs> oh, geez. Yeah. Probably. Well, we had Jason Momoa in one of the movies, right? He did That's go to right. the race wars. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't name it. That's it's right. in the first movie. <laughs> they are black and white, Mike. Uh, uh, it's a monochromatic race. Um, but uh, I just want to say with Avatar, if, he, if you know yeah. Jake would have said water power when they got the whales, then it would have really... Now we have water, water power. power. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> this That's is right. the way of water, you know? <laughs> the way of water. Oh, yeah. how about... How, okay, water. here's something I also didn't expect. When a guy takes the secret drugs that make you the king of this planet and he's giving a speech to you and they say how do we know you're the guy and he says well i know the secret name of this place it's dune i i my jaw <laughs> fucking dropped yeah i was shocked i was like they're say not only are they saying the name of the movie they're I'm like <laughs> dune like their face dune. just like it's a big deal like the look on javier bardem's face when he hears the word dune it's like it's a huge deal and it was to me too i was so excited yeah he one of my favorite thing. things about this movie is like anytime paul does anything and then it cuts to still yes. guard he's just like, <laughs> in awe oh, <laughs> yeah oh, and then the wow. music kicks oh. in that's gonna be a meme <laughs> yeah yes i wish uh, we all man. had a hype man it's good as javier bardem in this yes. movie yeah find you someone who i am the man from like space like, gas me up bro <laughs> going being high on drugs and saying these things and a guy just being like yes live your truth brother yes <laughs> right but then he's also like he goes to that one guy in the crowd he's like i knew i i see your grandmother yes. she's 12 years old she uh yes. gets hit with a rock in the face or something no <laughs> i love that <laughs> Yeah, I <laughs> like that immediately just goes like praise him. <laughs> it's like I know all the that shit. So crazy. Yeah, it's very effective. Dune, we're it's in great. a book. It's called Dune. <laughs> right. Oh, shit. And this kind of leaves it open ended of like how much, how much is this just like the drugs making him hallucinate? How much is it like prophecy? How much is it, it really ruins seeing? Him. I yeah. again, right. took that as the shocking realization of what this film is about. That he is pressured to act a certain way literally forced into it and when it happens he has to conform to those ideologies immediately i wasn't joking when i loved that rebecca mm -hmm. ferguson was like i didn't know till i took the drugs and basically paul Trey is like mm, me too right okay like and they're right. just yep. like they're yeah. on the same page because they're both fucked up now yeah yeah and then basically post him drinking the water of life he just transforms into this leader that he he yes. has to become he's, he becomes he's actually scary like he's like yes. mm -hmm. Like, I'm actually scared of you now. Like, I don't know if you should be in power because I'm scared of what's going to happen. <laughs> right. Well, that, that line, too. It's like, oh, they there's a war because you lose power. It's like, no, because I gain it. You know, like, that's yeah. such a yeah. good line. I yeah. see it all. And I, I see a thin, will die. a thin <laughs> a way, narrow way through. Yes. Yeah. Just the narrow way uh, through. It's so a narrow good. way through. Uh, just a shout out. I wouldn't that... do it. <laughs> I wouldn't drink the water. I would water not light. drink the waters. I would not do the spice. I realized while watching this because oh, if it's I truly get my hands this thing, spice. but it like it turns you into Doctor Manhattan. <laughs> you existed all I've seen time. Forty thousand possibilities. This it's is the like, only I way. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All time. I, I barely existed this time. Right. Yeah. Um, no, the food is too spicy for the foreigner. That was a good line. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Um, yes. I like that. there's spice in the food. Then he had said, uh, high on this yeah, spice you're getting spiced spice. on that Coca-Cola. I'm almost done with my water of life, too. Um, <laughs> hey, I'm seeing all guys. things. Uh, then he said he was also referencing Akira. Um, when sure. Tetsuo is kind of fall from sure. grace. And you can see that in the cape billowing with a fucking explosion yes. when he's really becoming a madman. It's like, damn, okay. Wow. So yeah. shout out to Akira. Denise said in an interview, and this is interesting. I don't know if I agree with it because he basically said he doesn't care about dialogue and he's only about images. Like he said, dialogue oh, wow. is for TV. Like, but mm -hmm. there, there is good dialogue in this movie. Like in a lot of it's from the book too. So it makes sense. But like, right. I thought that was 
it's a little strange for him to say. I mean, he made a whole movie called Arrival that's all about communication and stuff. Uh, <laughs> it was but, very dialogue heavy from what I understand. Yes. But he is a very image-based uh, director for sure. Um, yeah. He tells stories through imagery. So I understand kind of where he's coming from, but I do think dialogue, I mean, it can be both. Like both can be important, well, I think. let's get to Just one of my favorite Just don't say, images, yeah, he shows um, too. Go ahead. Yeah. Let's let's talk about the duel because then my question is, Jacob, is the final line of that duel in the book? Good work, Atreides. Um, oh, you I fought can't well. I can't remember. You fought well, Atreides. So compare that to Sting in a speedo, red hair. <laughs> <laughs> he takes all of his him. clothes off before that fight. Paul Atreides yeah. is in a still <laughs> fantastic. Mm -hmm. Yeah, which this fight is awesome. I think a good way to kind of wrap this up for final thoughts. Like, there's nice no music. Chatter. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Do you think Sting knows they remade Dune? He, he's <laughs> the only one to me seems like someone who would be unaware that this was even like a real sure. thing. Yeah, Those he's busy yeah. having like tantric sex or something. <laughs> yes, <probably>. exactly. <laughs> Somebody better call the Sorry, police. Yeah. <laughs> yes. No. Um, call the police. Yeah. Um, I think uh, the rest of the galaxy is going to be sending out an SOS once uh, the <laughs> Holy War begins. Message of let me ask That's you right. this, Colin. Do you think David Lynch is aware that Cookie? Oh, hello. Well, <laughs> he has he has done statements since the first one about how he would like to stop having people ask him if he's going to see it. He just does not care about this show. No. It means it it. And if anybody doesn't know the history, like that, he basically had to do that because of a deal with Dino De Laurentiis that funded. Yes, because he did. Uh, he did Elephant yeah, like, Man. It's, that was yeah, a hit. Like, They're like, oh, you, you can make blockbusters now. You it, but Dune. it's the reason he got to even make a movie somebody would even like. And he met yeah. Kyle Chandler met on Kyle that. Kyle like, You'll just yeah. be my or Kyle Kyle Chandler. Mm -hmm. Kyle McLaughlin. Thank you. And he was <laughs> right. like, That's you'll just good, be my so guy. Like... So it, it was a good thing. <laughs> no, mm -hmm. yeah, and he did have. I mean. He had a terrible experience working on that movie yes. uh, on he hated set. It. Like, yeah. So that's not the kind of movie that he wants to make. He wants to make fucking Inland Empire and a little Drive. Italian man screaming at you that you're not making him enough money while he's calling Arnold Schwarzenegger to be like, <laughs> "We we'll make another Conan film." And right, you're like, right. Oh, God, give me out Conan's of here. another. Conan's got desert power. <laughs> um, <laughs> you know. Yeah. But go back to this knife fight though. Like, it's it's great. It's choreographed well. It's great. And like even at the end, well, for when Paul's breathing heavy and doing the thing, but the way he wins, it's the same way Gurney teached him or Gunny yes. taught him. Like the knife, oh, I, I caught you with the. Knife I got you too. It's the, it's the double sided. Yes. It yeah. Is. It, is, it is interesting. They sort of moved away from the uh, shields in the from the first movie. Um, yeah. Because I believe in that book, that knife fight, they do have the the slow shield. You know, the slow knife penetrates the shield kind of thing. Mm -hmm. And it remember in the Lynch version, those shields looked insane <laughs> which um, by the way corridor crew on youtube they added the, the that style shields to the dune 2021 uh, just as a joke oh, it looks right. very funny and good check it out but yeah those are insane yeah, like these polygon, blocks ps2 yes. well, they look graphics. like tron i mean it yeah. looks like yeah they I were mean, trying tron. to imitate tron but they didn't have the yeah. skill <laughs> yeah it looks anyway. like the worst not, version of tron good enough to do tron yeah <laughs> yeah but, but the shield no shields in part this. of part one where he's training with josh brolin and then there's shield yeah. in the gladiator scene when he first is fighting those like Atreides prisoners, but he takes off the shield and he's like, oh, yes. Look, yeah. I'm purposefully. I need this. Which I like. Shield. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. What was the deal of, but that one's not even limp. Like obviously it's to set up. Cause they like he, drugged him up. I think. Sure. That he presets these fights that they're not even a challenge, but I guess yeah. why even set that up? If we want this guy's skill to be the known thing, it's like, he should be able to fight right. them at a hundred percent. Yeah. I didn't really understand that part. I mean, it's just um, for show. It's it's bread and circuses. But you know, the yeah, Baron yeah. was like, "We're gonna give him one real one. See if, see well, how he reacts." It's almost just a birthday. test. Yeah, Happy kiss birthday, me, nephew. nephew. Happy birthday, I do nephew. love that. Uh, <laughs> kiss me on the mouth a little bit, you know. I read uh, today. Yeah, I'm sure you did too. That that was improvised. Yeah. yeah. Austin Butler improvised the. <laughs> so he could. The Baron wow. kisses his nephew, but then the nephew kisses him again, and that was yeah, improvised. Yeah, yes, right. <laughs> Incredible. Right. Look, if you're not kissing your uncle in the mouth, like I don't know what to tell the, you. Are you really a villain? <laughs> so, so one more shout out to Austin Butler. When we get how this film ends with sort of, there's this whole sort of extended re-betrayal between the emperor with the harkonnens he the emperor it seems like kind of knows that things aren't going to go the harkonnens way right so it's when all these people kind of know that there's going to be this fall at the end there is this triangle of paul muadib comes in 
and he's in the still suit and he's fully fucking radicalized. Like he is, he is gone. He is not Paul Atreides anymore. He's yeah. not even he's looking Muad'Dib. at the emperor. Whistle. He is Muad. <laughs> he is the kangaroo rat. Mm-hmm. Yeah. He's barking orders at people. He's using the voice and doing all this stuff. It cuts to Stellan Skarsgård. He looks terrified because he knows he'll probably be executed or something in a moment, which he gets done. Grandfather, yeah. you'll die like an animal. Die he like says, an animal. You yeah. die. It's fucking awesome. <laughs> wow. But it also cuts to Austin Butler when that's done and the glee on his face. And when it sets up that the emperor has the challenger, you know, that you'll have a champion like you like. Austin Butler is so dialed into it's not even a thought in this guy's wild, savage hyena mind of like, well, this is all bad for me because House of Trades, like clearly I'm going to get executed, too. No, the thought on his mind is there's that guy I fucking want to kill when he's done talking. I'm pretty <laughs> sure we'll fight to the death and yeah. I'm going to kill him. And it's right. awesome. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah, absolutely. I do like when he's like, oh, cousin, he's like cousin oh okay he's like, all right That's great. <laughs> you won't be the first yeah. family member i've killed all right yeah and they say he it's murdered just, his mom and all yes. this stuff yes. yeah wild and he just killed dave batista it's like or, yeah, no, yeah he, right Another guy, Dave Batista, yeah. The fact that he's so stoked about it yeah that's incredible <laughs> it's and so for a while great. it's really good acting and yeah. the back and forth of when it looks like he has the upper hand and you see the room shift, like the fremen now it's like oh fuck this guy's in yes. charge of oh my god like we are fucked um wait I said this guy was the quiz that's Hederach and he's getting his fucking ass kicked. Like, you do see yeah. that on Javier Bardem's face like, for a second. It's really funny. Oh, it's yeah. like, wait, this is my dude. He's getting his fucking ass <laughs> this kicked. This can't be right. Yeah, his whole world is crumbling. There's yeah. no when way he could be he's wrong. Like, yes, genocide. Yeah, but, even but he's when, selling even it so hard. Physically yeah. comparing them, like, like you said, Timothy Chalamet is like this little twink, and then he's, Austin Butler is this big, like, mm-hmm. imposing, strong looking guy. Timothy Chalamet's a baby. <laughs> Twink by rides way, a Austin giant Butler. worm. The movie, <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. Austin Butler. We said like I was apprehensive about the casting. He, you know, he kind of came out of nowhere in this Elvis movie. He was Oscar nominated in that role? Almost won. Was one of the favorites to win, I believe, because yeah. people love okay. that role so mm-hmm. much. Um, he got a start. He was like one of these Disney Channel uh, type kids, oh, really? like, similar to Zendaya, where they they got their start on these these Disney sh- Channel shows. And, and Ortega, yeah. Hmm. Um, but I was reading like Denis Villeneuve was talking about the young stars of this movie and how they're the future movie stars, you know, Timothy Chalamet, Zendaya, Florence Pugh, Austin Butler. Like these are the mm-hmm. future of movies, he said. So what do you guys think about these, these young well, stars? Well, hmm. I would say that Denis Villeneuve probably commissioned Josh Brolin to write a couple <laughs> poems then from the set. Oh, That's wow. Interesting. Yes. Yeah, I mean, I agree. Sure. I'm not as blown away. Like, I thought Florence Pugh was fine in this. I thought Zendaya was fine in this. Yeah. I thought Timmy and Austin really surprised me. Well, Florence, she just doesn't have that much to do in this movie. No. I've liked her in other stuff, though, for yeah, sure. Um, and I think Timothy, like, compare him to... Zendaya's like real life boyfriend, uh, Tom Holland. I think he's a much better actor than Tom Holland. No offense to Tom. He seems like mm-hmm. a nice guy. Um, but yeah, to go from Willy Wonka to this, I mean, you yeah. guys ever and seen the I, King? I first saw the King, loved him in the King. I think I yeah. first saw him in Batman. Call Me By Your Name, which I thought he was right. fucking incredible in Call, Call yeah. Me By Your Name with mm-hmm. uh, my favorite actor, Army Hammer. Uh, <laughs> But uh, yeah, his range um, is pretty crazy for su- for such a young uh, guy, and his 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 selection in, in choosing roles. Um, the Wonka thing, I thought when I saw the trailer, I was like, I don't know about this. But you're saying you liked it. Um, I don't know. So he's, yeah. he, I think he's real special in it. I think it's kind of declared that he's the next DiCaprio, right? Obviously, Leo gave him that speech that said no hard drugs, no superhero superhero roles. roles. So he Mm -hmm. chose Dune over doing like a joining the MCU, which obviously a bunch of the actors in this are in the MCU in various ways, like Florence and- uh, And we get Thanos versus uh, Dax the Destroyer in this. Yeah. (laughs) God, we finally get some matchup. (laughs) Also, Drax looks better in this then who is the head inquisitor mike in obi-wan is that what that guy's called oh the grand inquisitor yes thank yeah, you. yeah yeah way better yeah, yeah yeah for sure well batista i mean 
we said for a while like he's a he's actually a really good actor like the best mm-hmm. wrestler turned actor ever to play uh, such a different part in this to play sniveling is yeah, very yeah. interesting to see him do i love well, that. when he shouts out denis villeneuve as sort of uh, being the one who's saying you can do more than just be Drax or right. just be sort of right. like him casting him in Blade Runner 2049, like put on these little glasses. Like he knocked, you know, he knocked those scenes out of the park. That and, scene, and, it's so subtle. Yeah. Like there's yeah. so much happening in that scene in subtext and it's only one scene, but man, he really nails it. And that leads to him doing like knock at the cabin and these much more mm-hmm. nuanced roles right. where he's not just doing either a broad comedy or the big bad or something like yeah. he has, he has range. Yep. James Bond. Yep. Yeah. So seeing it, he didn't have a lot to do in this movie, but seeing the sniveling side, the scared side no. of that character who was so dominating yeah. in the first movie, very cool. Right. Yeah. All right. Yeah. There's just so much to talk about. I could talk about this movie for five more that. hours. I love Absolutely. it. I would urge everyone to see it. Again, it, yeah. it's probably not for kids. Was this R rated? Is it R rated? I don't think so. I don't know. Double check. I mean, there's, there's not. I mean, there's stuff. no. Probably PG-13. There's weird stuff in it. Again, yeah. not as weird as Lynch, but there is stuff where you would see it, like those weird Harkonian concubines or the spider thing from the first one. That yeah. might be unsettling, you know. You got there's PG-13. no nudity, which is interesting. Is it really? There's uh, there is nudity in the TV movie uh version that they did in the 2000s. That's the only Dune ad. Is that so? Is nudity. that the oh? Is the that sci-fi the, the sci-fi? Is that yeah. the Children of Dune? I have seen that one. There's nudity in that. James McAvoy shows his penis. <laughs> oh wow! Uh, you might have yeah. to rewatch that. <laughs> yeah, I think so yeah. Um, but yeah, when Leah Sadu showed up, I was like, oh, I'm sure she's gonna get naked because oh, she does yeah, it like I, every movie. <laughs> I assumed immediately. Uh, so we'll get a little French dispatch. Yeah. Nice. Um, but no, I I love this movie. The whole cast like killed it. Like it was just a stacked cast cinematography production design sound design who like, shoots these who is this the, the guy who shot batman like, the batman it is the batman guy it is the batman oh yeah guy. what's his name like yeah or something because yeah. roger corman yes. did 2049 yeah. so that's a whole separate animal yes. but this yes. guy is yeah, very yeah. very good deacon's not yeah, corman Greg, <laughs> Greg Greg sorry Roger. deacon oh geez we're getting names all over the place <laughs> greg frazier baron harkin and baron corman 30 yes. rogue one yes. uh the creator which I didn't love as a movie, but it was very oh, well shot. Oh, but it does look good, yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. Uh, the Batman. Uh, yeah, he's a really good DP. Love that. Man. No, he's great. Um, but yeah, Blade Runner 2049, I mean, that, that movie looks great too. So no no, no slack to Deacons, obviously. No, but um, Delavanu has a, he knows what he, 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 he's helming the ship, you know. He knows how to yeah. pick guys that can help bring that frame. And then shout out to the music as well. Hans Zimmer's interns were really killing it with this one. <laughs> <laughs> yes, it's like uh, Thomas Edison, yes. Yeah. Where does Denny Villeneuve go from here? Hmm. What, so I know that he does Messiah or whatever in like four yeah. years. I mean, it's not going to be quick, obviously. I, I would assume well, there's I a pretty big has... time jump to get Anya Taylor-Joy, so you can't shoot the next one immediately, right? No. Timothy Chalamet is a little boy. Do you recast him? Do you make him like a 50-year-old guy? You could sort of age him up a little bit, but... Um... Okay. Yeah, I'm not sure. I do know, like, basically the way that it worked was Dune 1 got greenlit, and they said, if it's successful, we'll greenlit, we'll greenlight part two. It was successful, obviously. Then they made Boy, part that would have sucked. Boy, that yeah. would have sucked. Oh, that would have been terrible if they never made <laughs> mm-hmm. part two. Boy, um, that movie would have been considered <laughs> terrible. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Well, it just would have been a, a, a what-if kind of scenario of, like, oh, it would have been great. Like, almost like Game of Thrones. Like, oh, they're never, he's never going to finish the books kind of thing. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, but when, yeah, as they were making Dune Part 2, they're like, if this one is a success, then we'll green light Dune Messiah or Part 3, whatever they decide to call it. Um, mm-hmm. I know he has, he is attached to make a Cleopatra movie. Okay. Whoa. Denis Villeneuve is. Huh. Um, so that might be his next product, pro- project uh, is this Cleopatra movie. So I don't know, but I have faith in him, whatever he wants to do. I mean, he's been killing it for a while now. Um, do you go also, small? I mean, you keep going big. That's my big fear. Hmm. I don't know. Like, where do you go from here? I mean, you made Blade Runner 2049. People love that. Then you yeah. knocked Dune out of the park. And he said with Blade Runner 2049, he doesn't want to adapt someone else's work anymore because or live in someone else's world because he felt like he let the original down in some way, which I don't necessarily agree oh, with. Oh, right. Yeah. That's interesting. 
But yeah, he's... I mean, the Nolan comparison is so apt, Jacob, because it's like you could see. Th- I mean, this is like the Dark Knight. It's like, what are you following up with? You hope right. Inception. But the mm-hmm. thing now is, as this caliber of director, do you lock yourself into even your original ideas have to be as bombastic and as gigantic as the other huge stuff you develop? I think that right. can maybe set you up for an eventual fall that yeah. Tenet was that then Christopher Nolan kind of sidestepped and set a bomb off on and was like, ooh, I'm back. Mm-hmm. So, What's well, like the blank check thing, right? He can he prove <laughs> yeah. that he can make a huge commercially successful and critically successful movies. He's now got a blank check to do whatever personal project he might want to do, but maybe Dune was his personal project. And we know he can do smaller, more personal yeah. stories like prisoners or Sicario or, or anime. anime. Yeah. yeah. So, but he, yeah, he's attached with this Cleopatra for Sony pictures. And he's also uh, attached to a Arthur C. Clarke adaptation uh, rendezvous with Rama. So mm-hmm. more sci-fi stuff. That's interesting. Yeah. All right. Well, I'll be Period done with whatever piece. he does. But I think right now yeah. we have a rendezvous with final thoughts. <laughs> <laughs> After this. We're back here on Normies Like Us. We're laying down the great Shul Hadid, putting down our sandworm, relaxing, about to leave the planet Arrakis that is sometimes known as Dune. dune. Part two. My Dune, my desert planet. My Dune, mm-hmm. my desert <laughs> <laughs> uh, we were just saying, what the, what a heck of a movie. Mm-hmm. Um, here's what I, I'll wrap this up by saying. I purposefully didn't uh, create a new um, letterboxed top of the year list, because, of course, we're now in 2024, and I've not seen very many new film releases, right. uh, because I didn't want to tip my hand to you guys on Letterboxd that mm. I adored this film, but oh, I will wow. be immediately after this Putting it as my number one for the year. That might shift, wow. of course, as things come out. But this mm-hmm. is a top tenner for me. And just yeah. a small trivia fact for you guys that I think mm-hmm. you will absolutely adore. When you log on Letterboxd Films, you hit a small little eye icon to show that you've watched them. Now, right. on every other films, they turn green when you've watched them. On the two Dune movies, they turn, they turn blue. blue. Oh, I That's love right. that. Yeah. That's great. That's great. I do love that. Um, log them. Hit that yeah, box. right now this has got to be top of the year. We'll see what comes out. But man, like I feel like without even seeing Messiah, like with these two movies, like I'll be watching these in 20 years. Like I'll be watching these for the rest of my life, like intermittently, yes. you know, like they're that good already. I can't say that about any, literally any Marvel movie. No, yeah. Mike, it's the even end game. one thing, Mike, right. where literally right. you're like, wait, this big block buster like nailed the characters what i liked in it was the performances <laughs> like right. that's wild the theming right like yeah, wow like, yeah complex con. stuff the let plot? me ask you this con so yeah you said dune this will be on your top 10 was this part one on your top 10 it was not and it's i don't think retroactively it's going to maybe bring it up to that top 10 again i've reevaluated it that film to me is now a four star I, okay, I'm yeah, I am seeing say, on a letterbox here that you gave it a two star review originally. I, wow. I'm sure. I'm, I'm <laughs> sure. I'm incredibly not generous to how much that film just ends. Again, knowing now that the director's motif is the Dune movies I make just end mid sentence, that's great. I <laughs> mm-hmm. love yeah. that. I, yeah. I'll bump that one up to a four. This is a five to me. This is an Empire Strikes Back. It, yeah. I don't understand how you make a third to this. Obviously, it is. It's. It just sounds like the material is just going to get more and more challenging, which is exciting, Definitely. but also makes me nervous. It gets a little right. zanier. We'll yeah. see if he can pull it off. I will say, yeah. on Dune Part One was my top movie of 2021. Here's my wow. list right here. If you can see, oh, that. it's proof. I see oh, it. Beating um, out, uh, beating out yeah, Licorice Paul Thomas Pizza, Anderson, one of your favorite directors. Drive My Car, The Green Knight, you know, The Suicide Squad. Yeah, I liked it a lot. So, um, this was that my year. year. That would have been The Suicide Squad then for sure. Mm, yeah. Yeah. Interesting. Right. Um, yeah, I wonder where this is going to go. Again, I thought this was super, 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 super good. I probably will see it in IMAX. Uh, Again, you gotta, yeah, you gotta. I gotta. Um, wow, and it's funny, Christopher Nolan printed still suit. Yes, yeah, I'm gonna <laughs> go in with the whole still suit. Wait till Messiah comes out. I will be 
I uh, yeah, Usul himself. Um, well, you'll be printing a worm by that point. <laughs> at that point, I'll just reprint the popcorn bucket. That's my project right now. <laughs> Get well, that I going. Like... Gross. The yep. direction that sort of cinema is going, the fact that this is a financial success, the fact that something like Oppenheimer was one of the biggest movies of the year, um, you know, it, it does make me optimistic where it's not just, you know, a bunch of comic book movies or you know something like the lion king or something that's taking up all the top spots which a lot of the years it feels kind of like oh like you know these these not so great movies but they're they're big successes or the minion movies or anything like that i'm not trying to put down any of these movies but the fact that something like dune something like oppenheimer or barbie or any of these more original movies can be such a financial success does make me hopeful that it is possible to still make these kind of movies in Hollywood. Wow. To a lesser degree, it's like minus one, it, only in dubs, oh, no yeah. subs, right? That having yeah. success. And it's like a proper film. And then we talk about delineating movie versus film. And like, we're finally getting films back and they're making money. And I think that's yeah. a very cool thing to see. Well, and that's a good point is that they are making money. And last year, artistically, I'll agree with you, Jacob, was such a good year for movies. It's weird to have to balance it out with all the press that you read or just if you know about, if you work in in the entertainment industry, like we do from time to time, like you, you, you get the headwinds of the weird tech broification that's going on behind the scenes. Oh, that is sure. becoming so much more about money, 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 more layoffs. Obviously last year there were huge creative strikes. We're maybe headed towards another one this year too. It is a very weird time for the industry. So it is super exciting that they are still at least making really incredible stuff, the little bit of stuff that does trickle out. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And well, that's the thing is that, and lots of directors have said this, like there's no middle level movies anymore. It's either these huge, huge budget movies or independent movies, basically. You used to be able to get middle budget type movies, dramas, Oscar type bait movies, biopics. Like these movies, they seem fewer and fewer now. You um, make your money on DVDs. Yeah, and because the because the streaming model changed everything, and so now if you're not making your budget twice your budget back in theaters, you're considered a failure. And let me That's remind funny. you too: before Dune, Blade Runner twenty forty nine was considered a commercial yes. failure. Yes, it was a box yeah. office bomb, even though it was critically well received because mm-hmm. people didn't go out and see it as much as they hoped for. So. And when you say that Villeneuve sees it that way, I guarantee that's the reason that he just has it wrapped up in this whole, but nobody went to the theaters to see it. He doesn't hear the stuff of like, no, that movie gets watched quite a bit now that it's available. Yeah. It was just mm-hmm. marketed very strangely. Yeah. And if, if, if the market was still, you know, DVD sales were still a big part of it, I'm sure it would have found a second life with DVD yeah. sales. It's just the money and streaming just isn't the same anymore. No. And yeah. um, it is interesting, though, that these movies are becoming successful at the same time as, you know, this story that keeps being brought up is superhero fatigue, right? MCU movies, DC yeah. movies, all failing to reach expect, ex, you know, expected levels. Uh, so it's interesting. It's sort of a, a, a sea change in the, in the way that Hollywood seems to be going right now. So yeah um, maybe that'll change when uh, Deadpool and Wolverine comes out. I don't whatever, think it but, will. No. Yeah. Um, and it, with with rumors that like Warner Brothers or whatever they're going to be selling soon, like like they have this coming out, we have Joker two, like there's weird yeah. stuff that they have going on. But I was going to ask on the Joker vein of this, like this is this movie sort of like the Joker, where people can take the wrong message and he basically yeah. says you get what you fucking deserve and yeah. goes on I a rampage. So, like, we can say you yeah. can say that about a lot of movies, you know, Starship Fair. Troopers. But he uh, ends up buying into his own hype and like leading a, a revolt in a the wrong way yeah. maybe he yeah. becomes muadib by the end of it <laughs> yeah and then people <laughs> think that Fleck, that's cool Ar- right. arthur shaloub yeah um anyway <laughs> good um, job denny yeah some of the trailers before this oh, i was achievement. just like this is what's coming out soon ghostbusters the frozen empire <laughs> that's yeah um it's, even it's like it's just wild yeah even we talked about Civil mid-budget movie, which uh yeah like, you know when it has Alex, a score yeah, sorry. Oh, sorry i was about to just d- dig on ghostbusters when the score is like yeah. this world ending level of stakes it's like ghostbusters doesn't need to be this big 
Like that's no. all I'm thinking. Ghostbusters it's was like a goofy boy. comedy, and you're making it into like oh. this very serious uh, yeah. legacy thing. Epic, epic. Yeah, it's like no, make yeah. it smaller. A quiet Place Day One, Yawn. Um, not interested. Yeah. Even mm-hmm. the the new Alex Garland movie, Civil War, which is a director that I've liked. You know, Ex Machina, Annihilation. Love both those movies. Didn't like Men, his most recent one. No. And now this, I'm just like. What happened to you, Alex Garland? Um, mm-hmm. Just the fact that they say in that trailer, um, the Western forces of Texas and California are teaming up. It's like people. How mm-hmm. would people have Texas and California that? would not be on the same side no, 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 of the no. war? I That's disagree my... with that. People you disagree? Have that. People don't know how conservative Northern California is. The rest of California or Orange is County. conservative. Yes, all of it. Sure, it's but I think the population area. of los angeles county outweighs yes. the rural parts sure, of california absolutely. but in a world where i imagine we all got shot up or something so like <laughs> yeah, i don't know let's team up with texas yeah, yeah right i'll hold out hope for that that might, movie might be good but it just seems like it's trying to comment on real life but it's it's i don't know i'll, I'll wait well, and see but you're bringing up a, some a point that i i would like to say which is we set up top. I haven't been in the theaters in a long time. Mm-hmm. We've talked about some new releases. Typically, when we talk about new releases, we like to do a little segment where we're like, what was your theater uh, uh, experience like? You'll notice none of us did that for Madam Web. And maybe you can ascertain mm-hmm. like, <laughs> yeah, 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 well, yeah. how that occurs. Yes. Now, maybe there are other you're methods. These, these other previews or trailers or whatever, I don't see anything that's bringing me back. Like I, this seems like a singular momentum thing where, and I think the Oppenheimer Barbie thing was a good thing to bring up too, where it's like everyone in culture seemed like we all agreed, like shit, this is crazy. We all have to do this. And I feel like Dune was the same way where it's like, shit, that looks awesome. We all got to do this. And Mm -hmm. I don't think we're going to recreate that again so quickly. So it is, it is a sort of a cultural moment where it feels like everyone's talking about it online everyone's yeah. like going to see it like it's a real moment in most movies they don't have that anymore yeah. it's like feels like everyone's seeing even something like no way home spider-man had that where it's like everyone was going to see it everyone was talking yeah. about it new mcu movie, like the marvels obviously didn't have that right no Madame way of water had it but it, avatar also is wrapped up in that really weird doubt thing where people are like avatar yeah. sucks we don't even like this and then we well, yeah all the whole discourse it. behind it is like it's so weird you can't even name a character's name from avatar it's a kid, it's like, jake Sully. <laughs> jake yeah. spider and atiri that's it the teary yeah. spider yes buddy <laughs> yeah all your favorites um, and yes. son and younger yes. son yes. but it is interesting like i the trailers i saw before the movie there's like two that i was interested in and it was furiosa yeah. um return yeah. the planet of the apes to a lesser degree kong and godzilla um yeah i'll go to that because i'm that is, i'm then, me but it doesn't yeah. look as good well compared to godzilla yeah. minus one it's i like mean it's very, you can yeah <laughs> it's a cartoon we're going to a cartoon yeah. with that one yeah you're allowed to again we tell you that yeah. that's a positive that's a movie though that's not a film out. i'm going to a movie yeah. yeah yes yeah but i was i was doing a little research for possible future episodes mm-hmm. and i'll talk a little more off pod to you guys about this but um this summer, it just seems like there's a real lack of like big movie event movies that we need to talk about on the podcast, it seems like. Hmm. Well, even like, and I keep pitching to like maybe do like The Last Airbender, like that whole thing, where it's mm-hmm. like that was a phenomenon. And it seemed like there were people all of the, the one piece, the, the mm-hmm. way that I was, where people were like, this thing's coming, this thing's coming. When it hits, we're all going to be talking about this. And it just immediately fizzled. And it's not even just a question of the quality, like literally culturally, you just look at like that Netflix show had no lasting impact. Rebel Moon, nobody's talking about fucking Rebel Moon. All of this fucking streaming garbage. Yeah. Yeah. With the Airbender, it seems like it was mostly fans of the original that are like comparing it and that's about it, but not a lot of new fans coming in. Yeah, nobody's talking about it. No, it's not driving views uh... of the cartoon either. It's on the same platform. No. No, no, you're right. There's some movies and some new seasons of shows that we like that are coming out this year that I think could be possible episodes. Like we have the boys season four coming out in a little bit. House of the dragon season two, Cobra Kai season five, uh, knuckles. Yeah. I think fucking, (laughs) I think last week Michonne and Rick 
reunited yes. in the Walking Dead universe. Have you heard one fucking <laughs> person no. say out loud, like, well, thank God the Walking Dead's back? No, I haven't right? heard anyone in the past 10 years mention that they're watching it. You yes. know, like, it's and just still we going. We used to do stars in one of those shows. <laughs> so, yeah. I think. M- Mia Sadu. I mean, you guys are excited for new Cobra Kai, right? New the yeah, boys. yeah. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. Colin Farrell, the Penguin show? Come on. No, I'm not. <laughs> no. I'll be honest about that. I'm not excited about that. That's a continental. Yeah. Miss the me. Acolyte? Yes. The Acolyte is coming out What soon? is the Acolyte? <laughs> That's the new Star Wars show. The oh, Acolyte. Oh, yes. Okay. Of course, yes. we all know okay. about the Acolyte. No. <laughs> uh, <laughs> well, we got Craven yeah. at least. Yeah, yeah. Craven the Hunter. We got Beetlejuice. Well, I'm Beetlejuice. looking forward to Craven, Mike, because now I almost think retroactively we should do more Venom and more Miss episodes. Well, we got yeah, Venom you know three. What? Venom we three should later complete this fall. the universe. Yes. We'll have to do more Jared Leto, unfortunately. <laughs> but the only new movies that I think are episode worthy for this podcast, we've got yeah. Godzilla X Kong mm-hmm. in April. For fun. We've got uh, the Fallout TV show. What wow. is the? F- oh, the yes, yes, yes. Boy, you Walton saying Goggins. The fallout. What is the <laughs> yep. fallout? Yes, fallout, fallout, fallout. Um, and that's you know that's pretty much Furiosa if that ever comes out. Yeah, boy, and for uh, Westworld people, so it's hard to be a normie right now. Mm-hmm. But I mean, we could. I mean, Fallout TV show might be good. Like, like that's Jonathan Nolan and Lisa Joy, the, the oh, sure. Westworld sure, people. Sure, sure, sure. Um, Borderlands the movie oh no 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 you can't make me <laughs> not X-Men a kevin hart project anything with that borderlands, borderlands. wow alien romulus you know they're making a new yeah alien movie yeah 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 yep. yep. anyways sonic Strange. 3 we'll talk more off pod but uh i was just yep. doing a lot of research of like what can we even fucking talk we about do have an talk? interesting you know roadmap post pirates we're going to be doing some interesting yep. sci-fi adjacent yep. stuff so that'll yep. be fun um that's right we have a new and- series already picked out Maybe mm-hmm. we mentioned it before. We're not going to mention it right now, but yeah. post Pirates, yeah. there will be a new uh, I get monthly series. I'm excited to see Javier Bardem one more time. Like, I'm mm-hmm. not kidding, folks. No, I'm here for it. And <laughs> just to compare again, last time Dune, and then you look at Rebel Moon, and it's like one of these things is not like the other. The level of artistry that, that Zack Schneider, God bless your soul, does no. not have, you know. Yeah. You, you know. But Furiosa. Yeah. End of May, I mean, trust in George Miller, right? I don't know. Yeah, that is a guy making a big blockbuster that's his that yeah. will say something. He I was apprehensive about doing a Furiosa prequel to begin with. Again, it seems unnecessary. Like Mad Max Fury Road was such a singular thing that I don't feel like it needed. I didn't need to see Furiosa's origins or anything. Um, but if George Miller's doing it, and I mean, that trailer looked pretty cool in IMAX, I'm not going to lie. Well, so. Again, speaking of favorites, I mean, we have to cover that. Jacob, it's in your letterbox top four. And Mike, again, it might be your favorite movie. Like, you it's, guys love Fury Road. <laughs> yeah. It's way, way up there. I would almost yeah. probably consider it a near perfect movie. But yeah. that being said, no Mad Max movie has had a sequel that's actually related to it. So it is weird, too. But I'll check it out. Well, Faith in George. They- They've yeah. never made a Mad Max movie without Mad Max is my big issue. So I'm, I'm very curious right. about yeah. that. Yeah. But it's Annie Taylor-Joy yeah, to Taylor bring Joy. it back around here in a desert yeah, again. Guys. Yep. Here's here's the last thing I want to say about Big Eyes. She yeah. should not have gone to the fucking premiere of this movie because no. all these articles came out about Yeah, ruined the surprise. It. She yeah. is in two <laughs> seconds, maybe one second of mm-hmm. this movie. Is that? Yeah. yeah girl uh, no they're gonna they're the gonna have to premiere? just don't go like, i didn't think that was doing? funny you're taking someone's mother's seat yes well they <laughs> shot know? that whole movie without that leaking out it immediately leaks the second she shows up just all you had to do is wait one more week right you're like oh she's playing a character a mysterious character that nobody knows i wonder who it unless be. you've heard of the I'm book the spice yeah oh can i can i say that then about this speaking of leaks and stuff the yeah. Dune universe, I mentioned this to Jacob off pod. It is the hardest thing I've ever experienced in pop culture to not have spoiled for you because just oh, really? looking around, everybody's dropping what happens in the books. Like every, everybody that's read the shit uh, is yeah. constantly spoiling it, you oh, know? Yeah. And that's, that's a little bit frustrating is you, you can't go in blind. Like I know crazy shit that happens. I know and the I Duncan Idaho thing Jacob was saying because right. my brothers right. read these books and one time was like, 
you're not going to believe this. <laughs> right. Like, yeah. Like, like Mike saying, like sometimes well, of course they got to bring say Jason Momoa back. Insane things to you. I, yeah. I guess, man. Yeah. I don't well, know. It's like, it's like trying, it's like if you've never seen Star Wars and you're trying yeah. to not be spoiled and watch Star Wars. And his name's Jar Jar Binks and he's like a <laughs> right. fucking idiot. And they're like, yeah. what? But it's like no, you're really. watching, you're watching a new hope. You're like, this is pretty cool. And someone's like, yeah, you know, Darth Vader, that's his dad. You're like, okay. Yeah. So this guy, that's his dad. <laughs> Thanks. It, it, it's it's unfortunately just part of like uh they've been out it, you know the story time has passed so, so far long that yeah. it's sort of yeah. become common knowledge or like something like citizen kane where they're like oh yeah. rosebud is the sled oh shit and just well, culturally yeah, you just absorb yeah. it yeah yeah so it's 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 been a while it's just one of those things where it's like it is hard to not know where it's going but that's seeing the sure. execution is kind of what we're here for because it's been so unadaptable so i think that's what keeps us excited for the yes. venue I'm, version. I'm sure game, game of thrones was probably like that where like book readers were like you're not going to believe what happens next and then people well, were watching were it for the first time like we were <laughs> mm-hmm. the, the way that you described oh, sure. the sand <laughs> this guy i was like yeah okay i guess mm-hmm. Joe Pascal, you're right he's, he's, he's a rising star <laughs> but he, here's yeah boy this this thing. I mean, it's just it's so it's so fascinating because Star Wars is such a big thing. I want I don't want Dune to be like Star Wars. I want it to be its own big thing, and I'm happy that it is. And I don't know what its future is, but I liked all of this. It could stop right now, and I'm happy with these two movies. So mm-hmm. I, I'm good. I, I truly yeah. never thought it would become a cultural phenomenon, sort of like it has. Even when they were, when I knew, you know, Denis Villeneuve was signed on to make it and everything, part one, I was like, I'm sure it'll be like a mid-sized hit. Like it'll be like Blade Runner 2049. It'll mm-hmm. be a, sort of a box office yeah. disappointment. I didn't expect it to be the level that it is, where it's like, yeah, people are talking about it with Lord of the Rings and Star Wars and these major, major franchises. Like, because I always thought it was just too weird and too '60s psychedelic to ever really be what it's sort of become. So, I'm kind of happy about that. Um, I don't want it to get run into ground, like you said, with spinoffs and and you know, they're like, we have this IP now, we got to keep making content in this universe, and it's just hmm. going to dilute. We're in the Dune business. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah, yeah, well, yeah. What is and that? So this mean? Bene Gesserit TV show, I don't know about that, but the Dune nope. must flow. All right, well, <laughs> seriously, if you say so. Yeah, exactly. So, <sighs> give me one more Dune Messiah. Get uh, Chani to take back her home world, or whatever you're going to do to wrap that up. Call it the day. Yeah. I don't know what happens in the book, but you know, do some res- yeah, resolution that's that just fun. done. Um, yeah, yeah, yep, yep. The marketing, I think, you know, because they did marketing for the Oppenheimer thing, right, right, right. And then this had a really big marketing push. Zendaya looking like a robot. Just want to say everybody was smashing the hell out. Yeah. Well, I think that casting these kind of hot actors Mm -hmm. right now of like Zendaya, Timothy Chalamet, Florence Pugh, like these are the up and coming people that are like the new stars. So Mm -hmm. getting them sort of in the early part of their career was also good commercially for this movie so there is an interesting if you follow this side of pop culture where there seems to have been a reaction to the press tour and god bless that funny metropolis robot outfit mm-hmm. mike just brought up the entire world oh yeah love but it. i saw a comment that somebody said the dune cast specifically the four young people give off um you're my co-worker not my friend energy and I find that fascinating. It very much mm. doesn't seem like they have more relationship beyond a professional one. Really? And in fact, Zendaya, in every interview, when she's asked things like, who do you think has the most riz on the I, cast? Or all these people, did you see those yes, things where she Colin, said, I saw this my too. boyfriend, Tom Holland. Like she I hated this because doesn't talk about the cast. Yes. It's well, I strange. hated that they asked her this because you know that she's in a long-term relationship with Tom Holland. You're trying to stir up drama by getting her to say, like, I guess Timothy that's Chalamet what it is. has yeah. riz or something. Yeah. It's like, it's kind yeah. of insulting. So I didn't and like maybe, that they're leading questions like that. Maybe the perceived coldness is not feeding into the PR machine then, Jacob. Mm-hmm. I'll, I'll yeah. accept that. These Look questions are with, how they uh, control us. <laughs> right. <laughs> to compare it to, so Sydney Sweeney was on SNL wow, recently, yeah. right? Yeah, and boy. so she was in this rom-com with Glenn Powell where they, everyone was talking about, oh, they said such great chemistry and stuff, but she has a, a fiance. And so so all the press was like, oh, you and Glenn Powell, like, was there something going on there? It's like, you cheat on no, each other. like I have a fucking fiance. Like, why are you asking me that? So I just don't like that side of things, but. They're yeah. just trying to make drama for content purposes, you know? Yeah. Yeah. 
I don't know. Let Zendaya and Tom Holland be happy. You know, Timothy Chalamet, he's probably doing his own thing. I think he was dating a Kardashian. or uh... I think he is. Tom Holland's <laughs> super sober now, and Timothy mm. Chalamet has said that Tom Holland is another one of these guys who has pulled him aside and been like a huge North Star to him on navigating oh, sure. fame. So, yeah. Uh, everybody yeah. seems copacetic. That's all I'll say. And I've seen stuff yeah. with like Florence Pugh. She seems like she gets along with everyone. She just seems like a very... He- fun yes. person to be around so yeah mm-hmm. she just seems like she's a mensch and just a fireball so i i don't know how you could when you had know. josh brolin writing Miss poems Blow. on set i mean yeah. it's, it's like how can you say these people don't like each other when you have josh brolin losing his mind <laughs> yeah and again javier bardem they're like hey no country hey you know yeah they had a nice back to the love desert each other <laughs> yeah love each other yeah, it's great. You just get Woody Harrelson in Dune movie next, you know. Oh, uh, sorry. All right, final <laughs> final question: Who who yeah. could Woody Harrelson have been a better emperor? <laughs> Age of That's him. interesting. I don't know who. I mean, or Jared I would Leto, be like Al Pacino. If you're going for an Is old there... actor like Christopher Walken, why not like um, Al Pacino or Robert De Niro or someone? Yeah, I know. I know the. Kids are probably the next big cast edition, but is there any upcoming character, Jacob, that you're like, I would love to see this person play, you know, who, who what is a big yeah. new well, addition? Well, Leah, I mean, Anna Taylor Joy is going to yeah. be a big mm-hmm. part of it. And Leto, too, is like a big part of Dune Messiah, which is, um, you know, Paul so and son. Johnny's son. So, right. Yeah. But he'd probably be, you wouldn't be able to cast anyone away. And like, nobody's that young now. Like you don't know any famous fifteen year olds or right. you know, ten year yeah, olds. Yeah, I'm not yeah. sure what they'll do. Because sure if you don't want to get rid of Zendaya and Timothy, like how do you age up to have yeah, a ten year old? That's so confusing to me. You can yeah. you can water of life uh Anya Taylor Joy, like three years she just fucking grew into an adult woman. I don't know. Like you could just bullshit that. Well, yeah, but it seems like Chani they're and, changing it a little bit yeah. because she is like she is supposed to be like a young girl that is wise beyond her years kind of thing. Yeah. So if they're just gonna age her up a little bit that that would make more sense and they can say oh, it's the water of life made her grow faster and she, this one was all yeah. about condensing the timeline do they expand like crazy for the next one is the big question yeah. mm, interesting it'll be interesting I, guess we'll see. I don't know yeah he says he's working on the script uh but you know he says he's got some other stuff to do he wants to do it and yeah. keep going to see this so they give him money the christopher nolan thing also, both big format, go to the theaters kind of guys, go to the IMAX version, yeah, you know, oh, keeping yeah. that alive. Yeah. So shout out. And I'll oh. say one other thing, Colin, one last thing about Austin Butler. Mm. People saw there's this video of him like practicing with guns uh, now. And they're saying, oh, he's going to be a young Val Kilmer in Heat 2. Oh, I have seen hmm. that um, yeah. the big picks for he'd be Val Kilmer and then Oscar Isaacs would be Al Pacino. And then, of course, Adam Driver would Adam be Driver De Niro. Adam Driver would be De Niro. Yeah. yeah. That's kind of Michael Mann's preferred casting right now. I, w- I hmm. would I would adore that. Yeah. That would boy. be interesting. Yeah. <laughs> nice. Ooh, that's Heat, a hot Heat cast. 2 and Gladiator 2 coming out soon. So. <laughs> Gladiator 2. I don't Let's know. See. Are we covering that this if year? If it's not filmed in are. black and white. With yeah. weird Michael demon Pascal guys in the background, and, uh, no way. Yeah. Elysium, Mike. <laughs> wow. Yeah. Three hundred million dollars well, in climbing. It's it's interesting, you know. Hollywood is an interesting business, but we need a Butlerian jihad to get rid of all this AI. I'm going to say that right now. <laughs> right, right, right. Yeah. Believe yeah. from your lips to uh, <laughs> Muhadib. Um. All right. Yeah. That. If, yeah, yeah. That was Dune. Boy, I was doing. We could talk for another two hours. I was going to say, I feel like time to wrap it up. Next time we meet in person, we're going to talk about it more. Yes. Yeah, it's fine. Yeah. You know, we, we don't know what to do this summer. That. We'll just keep talking about Dune. Yes, <laughs> just, <yeah>. potentially, potentially <laughs> for the end of time. One last thing I want to ask you, Colin. You said you rewatched mm-hmm. the David Lynch version, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. and you said it, it made it better, right? It I just... now think I need to rewatch it because I. I'm interested like, to see how me what too. I would think of it. Now. When yeah. I say it made it better, like at the end when they're having the knife duel with Sting, <laughs> in my mind I am like, I do understand kind of why this is happening. <laughs> like yeah. I do understand <laughs> what David Lynch thinks is going on on screen. Right. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Oh jeez. Shout out Sean Young, Blade Runner. Uh, That's yeah, right. Blade Johnny Runner too. Yeah. yeah, it's yeah. the Dune Blade Runner connection persists. <laughs> yeah, very yeah. weird. Very strange. Jake so Gyllenhaal Dune. probably he could he could he's a hmm. Denny Villeneuve regular he hmm. could end up in in one of Hell these yeah. I don't know if there's a spot for him. Uh, Hugh Jackman yeah. might have been a he could be a soldier of something or other. 
I'm not kidding. I would like to see Vin Diesel in this franchise. I know that sounds dumb. I don't. I mean, Pitch Black. A hard he could be as somebody else. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Pitch Black. I mean, bring that back. Yeah, dude. Mm-hmm. It is. It is. It does have a very Chronicles of Riddick feeling. I bet he loves the Dune books. Oh God. man, yeah. He's a nerd for sure. Yes, He's a big nerd. He, is. he loves D and D. Dune. <laughs> Dude. With that hot rock, you know. <laughs> With that hot rock, I always kind of pictured. He's gonna be in yeah. uh, Zack Snyder's Dune, which is coming out next yeah, year. Yeah, he'll be. Yeah, Rebel. <laughs> yeah, Rebel, oh, Rebel Snyder's Dune. Rebel Dune. De- Desert Worm. Rebel Dune. Yeah. Yeah, Red Desert. He'll call it something like that. <laughs> he will. It'll be an incredibly obvious rip. <laughs> Red That's Desert, the child bad. from uh, Beyond the Stars. Uh, coming soon from zach right. schneider visionary director that's enough <laughs> visionary director denny villeneuve uh mm-hmm. so right. that has been dune part two we're your hosts um check us out at normies underscore like underscore us let us know your thoughts write to us about all the water of life that you've ingested if you know how to walk without rhythm um check out our youtube the... so you can see mike's amazing yes, cosplay. Do that. <laughs> what's the little yeah. thing that uh Zendaya is like this is like my special little thing it's the thing mike's wearing because it's the thing you wear underneath your still suit your She's regular like, still suit. you can put your thumb on my little thing and he's like okay yeah yeah <laughs> you know so crazy. attention to detail yeah. yeah yeah what a what a crazy movie all right Listeners, if you're going to perform a jihad, do it at that email address. Uh, again, watch us on YouTube. We have been your hosts. This is the Quizak Colin Rack. Um, Mike Adib. Uh, and this is uh, Baron J. Conan. <laughs> I was waiting for a J. Conan. <laughs> Jacob Atreides, yeah. Oh, man. Yeah. All right, well, may your podcast and be listened, armies. May your podcast chip and shatter. <laughs> May your podcast be liked <laughs> and shared. That little asshole statement <laughs> yep. at the end there. God, I loved it, Austin Butler. Bye. Bye. Bye.